Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. Today's Sunday session is brought to you thanks to the fine folks at More Beer. Visit them right now at morebeer.com. Feels like work. Shooting the shit for two hours, drinking beer and talking beer. What a wonderful experience. Can we not have the barf bucket near my mixing board? (laughs) (laughs) I think everybody can read the book. I knew you were going to use this book as an excuse to quit doing this show. <laughs> Mrs. Bub, if you want, I can mail you the Bub Timer. Yeah, Newcastle. Especially in the can. Have you ever had it in the can? <laughs> no, I have not had it in the can. <laughs> no, so I closed my eyes and I concentrated really hard. Now, live from the Brewing Network Studios in Northern California, this is the radio program for home brewers. Craft brewers, beer lovers, and beer geeks. It's your only source for live beer radio that brings expert brewers together with, well, expert drinkers. This is the radio program with a head on it. This is The Session. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the session. I'm your host, Justin Crosley, back in the studio today after Spring Fest, which was our 10th anniversary year. You made it. Uh, what a shit show. <laughs> Not the smoothest 10-year anniversary? No, man. I, you know, I think I do this after every uh, event, but I'm just, I'm just going to do it again. Just don't volunteer if you're not going to show up. I'll tell you that uh, right now. Oh, my God. You know, exactly. Just, 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 Come on. Just don't do it. <laughs> it's not necessary. You people are the worst. You're not helping anybody. Have you thought about paid employees? <laughs> I think we we're gonna... actually tried to incentivize them with real, actual human money, and still they didn't show up. No. Whoa. Yeah. Huh. I actually tried to hire a front gate staff, a staffing company, too, but they couldn't. They couldn't pull their shit together. Nobody knows how. To, apparently, I should have just started an event company. Like an <laughs> right. event, I think events, you're finding, event finding staffing your staffing company. Yeah. You know, to pull these things off. Uh, it, those of the volunteers that did show up, though, uh, they were just wonderful. And, and thank you for doing that. And so many, you know, show up over and over again. And and, and every year, people don't show up. And those, those people that show up year after year mm-hmm. get stuck with all the work that was assigned to other volunteers, and they still continue to show up. I don't know. I tell them every year. I was like, I don't know why you guys do this anymore. This happens to you every year. Honestly, the Munozes yeah. sign up every year, and they work the first shift, and they're dialed in. But yeah. inevitably, every year, they stay at the end of the fest and help us clean up buckets. Right. Every year. It's a, it's a, it's a mess. Major uh, karma points. Uh, yeah. I'm going to try again next year to hire out the whole front gate staff, though. I think uh, we're just getting too big. Too big for our own britches. Too big for my bootstrapping methods of, of 2005. Uh, it's just... It's, it's, You're too successful now. I lose years off my life every... <laughs> you know, And Bevo, too, let's be honest. So, uh, uh, But it was a success... Uh, uh, you know, another sellout crowd and uh, you know, a lot of great breweries. I want to thank all the breweries that participated. Um, that's another thing I, I could bitch about, too. Uh, there's always some breweries. Now, it's a donation model, right? Cause it's, a non- sure. it's a nonprofit event, and uh, it's, it's actually very nice that we're still grandfathered into that donation model so that we can, mm-hmm. you know, raise some real money for our nonprofit here. Because um, a lot of times, you know, breweries don't do that anymore. Oh, the brewery stuff. The, it's not that the, the, California doesn't allow it. No, no. It's just that it's just that. Yeah, there's a festival every weekend. They they've just gotten at. So you know, a lot of times if you're a new festival, 
you just got to buy the beer. It's just the way it is. So okay. We're, we're lucky enough that we still get it donated. But we, we have some very specific parameters because we know exactly how many people are going to show up. We know exactly how much beer we need for, mm-hmm. for those people. And I even cap the, the ticket sales. We don't, we don't want them to have to donate more beer, uh, and we don't want uh, the park to be too crowded. You know, right. we, we, we like a nice experience, so we even cap our sales at, at where we're at right now. Um, but invariably, uh, you know, a few breweries – do not bring the the allocated donation amount, which is two half barrels of beer, and they mm. show up with uh, you know like two uh, corny kegs, two five, two sixtals, two sixtals of of beer. <laughs> So I got stuck at the front gate, you know, for a good first hour of the festival. And I go, and then I, I finally get away. I go, I go walk the festival and at least two breweries are out of beer. Wow. And, at like a quarter to one. And mm. so again, kind of like with the volunteer situation, I appreciate yeah. you volu- volunteering, but you're not doing anybody any favors if you don't show up. Right. And frankly, you're not doing me any favors if you agree to the amount of beer that we need and you can't bring it. Yeah. Now I don't, I'm not going to judge anybody or, or be mad if you can't bring it then, but then you, you can't participate. Right. That's just the kind yeah. of the way it is. And so do they not know how to read? You know, they're fine print. It, it's ridiculous. They do. And, and I think, you know, Bruce just think, well, you know, we just don't have that much to donate, but we, you know, we want to be a part of it. And, mm-hmm. and, and I can appreciate that sent- sentiment, but you, but then you just can't, you, you can't be right. a part of it. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I've never done this before, but I'm, I'm going to strike breweries off the list next year. They, they will not get invited back. Actually, I noticed a couple of breweries that didn't show, and I think they should also be struck off the list. <laughs> because, well, I mean, honestly, because we don't allow some breweries in because we know exactly how many breweries we're allowed to have. Mm-hmm. So if you're taking up valuable real estate. We're saying no to brewers by, you know, a month before the yeah. event. We're sure. saying that we, you know, we're turning people away. And again, I, I do appreciate all the brewers' generosity. In fact... There's a, there's a good handful of the breweries that have been doing this for years that know how it goes, and they bring extra beer because they don't, you know, because even with the two half barrels, you know, by by about three thirty or so, if you're one of the more popular ones, you're you know you're starting to run out of beer, and that's sure. okay. I, I had um, one brewery bring sixty gallons. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Was that Sully? He uh, said he was bringing extra. Twenty first Amendment brought extra. Um, they even offered to pour later. Um, oh, I always pad my uh, my alcohol permit by a good half hour in either direction. Okay, um, because you know that permit is is a strict time, and if a brewery gets caught pouring, you know, a minute afterward, and you never know when that's going to happen. The ABC could come check these things out. So years ago, I just started padding it, you know, because I don't mm-hmm. want anyone to get in trouble. Right, you know, if at four o'clock, you know, some brewery doesn't get the message, or or some brewery has a volunteer themselves who doesn't care as much about uh, exactly. uh you know and ends up pouring at 405 right and uh, they can get a lot of trouble for that so i've tried to uh, protect them with that and the uh, 21a was even they kind of knew that and they're they were like hey we, we'll keep pouring till 4 30 if you want and i was like no man i gotta get these people out of here <laughs> <laughs> right i was like i'm sorry i know you don't want to bring beer home but uh, uh no <laughs> yeah <laughs> we gotta go uh anyway so yeah, I've never had to do that before, but I'm just going to nix a couple breweries. Because it's kind of like year after year, some of the same ones doing it. Right. It's just like, again, I, I, I'm not mad at you, uh, but you just can't you can't, be, you can't participate. Yeah, there. but that's good news for yeah. breweries that have been wanting to get in for right. the last few years. There's right. going to be some open slots. There'll be a little more room. Yeah. Next year, if there is one. And hopefully more beer. <laughs> oh, come on, there will be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just one more. If I make it. Yeah, well, yeah, that, I guess that is the deciding yeah. factor if you live through the year. Yeah. And if Bev wants to do another one with you. Right. If, I, well, mm. if, I, the, the, if I don't kill you <laughs> before the end. <laughs> right. She's still of sound mind at that time. <laughs> well, I screamed sound at, mind. I screamed at poor Bev this year. I lost it on her. Oh. I was so angry with everybody at the front. <laughs> and, I, I'm, and I'm calling her on the radio. And, she's and not also, answering. I remembered, yeah. I did respond at least once because I heard somebody call my name and I said, mm. this is Bev. But I got no reply. Right. <laughs> and then, you know, so it, you didn't it, hear it was that. just a disaster. And and then, you know, we get through that whole thing. And finally, Bev, you know, comes to find me. And, you know, she's like, how is everything? And I just lose it. Answer your fucking radio. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sick of this shit. I've <laughs> never actually been that. I'm actually still a little angry. I've never been that angry at you. Yeah. That doesn't sound like you at all, Justin. Uh, you don't have that in you. Right. But that one wasn't broadcast, so it's different. Oh. Right. 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, it was a success. Thank you to all of those who, who came out to uh, support our 10th year of Spring Bruce Festival. Another great weather year and uh, just really yeah. great beer all the way around. Yeah. And Lucas Ohio did a good job coming his comeback yeah. show, right? Yeah. Our bands uh, both were great. Lucas Ohio sounded fantastic. Um and uh, Mitch Polzak and the Royal Deuces also sounded awesome. Yeah. Uh, good rockabilly band that played. So all of it was very cool. Somebody's microphone's all fucked up. It's probably mine. Figure this out here. A little scratchy. Yeah. Sounds like it's mine. The whole studio's falling mm. apart. It's 10 years old now, too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. The studio's 14 years old, really. Oh, man. Uh, okay, well, um, you know, on to another topic, just because we, we need to uh, address it quickly, um, and, and, and sadly, uh, you know, Tasty, some of you know this already from, from over the weekend, and you might have seen social media, you know, Tasty uh, hasn't been on the show for a couple of weeks, um, and uh, it's not an April Fool's thing, I wish it was, I would give anything if it was a, this was an April Fool's, but, um, you know, our, our dear Tasty uh, was diagnosed with, with cancer, uh, a couple weeks ago. That's right. Um, and he's getting that taken care of. And I don't have a lot of information. I wish I did. Um, but I know that they had to do uh, some emergency surgery, um, which I think was a success. Uh, but there's some remaining things to, to deal with. And, and we don't really have a, a long-term prognosis for him yet. Um, they're hoping to find out more information this week. Uh, so uh, I will let people know as I find out. Um, but we're all just, you know, kind of hoping and, and praying and whatever it is you do uh, for Tasty. Yeah. Um, but, I always thought him or I it w- like would either, you know, get hit by a bus or uh, just drop dead instantaneously, preferably mm-hmm. on the air. Oh, sure. Um, I was really... <laughs> Figured that that was the way things were going to happen, so I'm 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 really horrified to hear that Tasty is ill, and uh, we can just uh, hope for the best that uh, maybe it's something that was caught in time and that he can fight and yes. and um, you know we'll find out. Um, did, did you find out if uh, he heard us yelling at him from the fest? I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it got pretty loud. It did. It did get pretty loud. I did a little toast at the fest, and I was really happy with the screaming participation. Um, yeah, I don't know. So Tasty's a pretty private guy, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And um, I've only exchanged maybe one text with him since I find, found out. Mm-hmm. I've been communicating uh, through his son, has been trying to keep me in the loop of what's happening. Okay, that's um, good. So, no, I, I, I don't know if he heard it or not. <laughs> I, I think uh, another friend um, told me that he saw the toast and, and was happy to see that. So yeah. that's cool. But uh, no, I, I haven't even talked to, to Tasty. And I hope I'll get to this week. You know, I think that they're, as a family, just kind of waiting to find out what's next, uh, which they said right. um, was supposed to happen as early as this week right now. Okay. And I hope that that does happen for them so that they can kind of figure out what's happening. And then uh, hopefully I'll get to go visit Tasty and, and, and maybe find out myself. Um, in the meantime, of course, respect uh, their privacy. Uh, you can always send Tasty Love via social media. He's a he's a social media whore. Let's be honest; he'll, mm-hmm. he'll find your messages there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, that's the bad news about our Tasty. Uh, so keep him in your thoughts, and I'll, I'll do my best to keep you up to date. And we sure hope he's back sitting in his chair soon enough. Because in the meantime, it's fucking shimky. I is, feel sacrilege. Yeah. I didn't even think about that when I sat no down. Respect. And yeah, like... No respect. Yeah, no respect. Walk right soon. in, you sit Too right soon. down in Tasty's chair like he was never here. Yeah. You Whoa. know what? If anybody were going to sit in Tasty's chair, I'm sure he would have it be Kim. <laughs> you know what? I bet your ass that is correct. 100%. Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. Got you, boo. I believe that. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> really do. that's pretty accurate. Yeah. Um, All right. Good job, Kim. Tasty's tasting room was still alive and well at the Spring Bruce Festival. Thanks oh, yeah. to, you know, he uh, Tasty was still able to put that together. I want to thank uh, Doe's Homebrew Club and Vito uh, over there specifically for uh, uh, carrying the torch and, and putting up uh, Tasty's tasting room, which was our, you know, it's our homebrew tent at the at the festival, and it wouldn't be the same without it. I mean, no. and that in and of itself is its own tiny little fest, and that's a feat to 
yeah. to accomplish. So yeah. thank you thank you for making it, us not have to do it. It's a lot of donated beer there, too. Yeah. I didn't see the homebrew tent running out of beer. kegs or something? <laughs> I saw, yeah, over, over, I saw at least 22 on the menu when I walked by. Yeah, I think there were 26 kegs donated in total. Yeah. Those guys yeah. really, really participate. Um, and it was all the more, uh, you know, necessary to have Tasty's Tasting Room there this year. Oh, yeah. So, Vito and your crew at Doe's, thank you for that. You guys did a great job. Uh, okay, well... That's that. Uh, we do have a great show for you today. Uh, Allegory Brewing from McMinnville, Oregon, is on the program with us today. They came down to our beer festival, brought two half barrels all the way from Oregon and poured that all day, and then stuck around to do the, the show with us. So we're going to be talking to the boys from Allegory today. Uh, they're hanging out here in studio with us. Um, so I'm excited about that. Uh, yeah. I, I did have their beer over the weekend at the fest. Oh yeah, one of the few tents I did stop by, as a matter <laughs> of fact. And, and uh, are you excited? I am excited. Uh, they had, and I think we're going to taste it tonight. They had their uh, Mexican lager on. Oh, that's right. Uh, which I really enjoyed, and I think we're going to taste that on the show here tonight mm-hmm. too. I saw it on the notes. Yeah, ready. So. Um, yeah, so we got them in the studio. Let me get through a few announcements. Um, announcements are brought to you today by Drake's Brewing Company. Go to drinkdrakes.com and check it out. They got uh, a lot going on uh, all the time, including a beer tasting and food pairing with Drake's Brewing at Belly Left Coast Kitchen and Tap Room in Santa Rosa. That's happening on April 10th. Uh, it's a beer tasting and food pairing with Chef Gray. He was on uh, Food Network's Chopped, as a matter of fact. And they're doing a six-course meal paired with six different drinks. Drake's Beer. So uh, go join uh, Chef Gray and Drake's Brewmaster John Galuli. Uh, tickets are just 50 bucks for a six course meal. So uh, go to drinkdrakes.com and you can find that. Um, all right. Another festival that's happening I wanted to let you know about is uh, Brewbies is happening May 4th. It's at Faction Brewing Company in Alameda. And uh, that's a great event. It's a it's to benefit the Keep Abreast Foundation. You can find tickets over on Eventbrite. Um, and that one's been going on for a few years, too. And they do a great job of raising a lot of money for the Keep Abreast Foundation. So uh, if you want to drink beer for a good cause, May 4th at Faction Brewing Company. That's Brewbies. And you can get your tickets over on Eventbrite. And it's already time to start planning another Brewing Network event. BNA 14 <laughs> is just around the corner, Bevo. I quit. I actually quit. <laughs> you sound so excited. Uh, just, no, just quit. Just around the corner. <laughs> uh, save the quit. date. It's Saturday, June 29th from 6 to 11 p.m. It's going to be out there in Providence, Rhode Island, where the, the closing party for Homebrew Con, as we have been for a couple of years now. So uh, come party with us. Just save that date if you're going to Homebrew Con. Or if you're just on the East Coast, we're going to be in Providence, Rhode Island, Rhode Island Saturday. June 29th. I will get details about tickets and and what kind of party we're throwing here soon. But I can tell you that we're partnered up with More Beer and Melvin Brewing Company. Uh, we have rented out a facility. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna throw a pretty big bash. It's gonna be all you can drink, which is always exciting. And um, you should just get, have Gary Glass run the. Entrance. Will there be volunteers? Yeah. <laughs> We, so that one, and I don't know why I don't just do this all the time. We're just paying that venue a fucking fortune to run it for us. I support this. Uh. So, <laughs> I mean, it is a small fortune for God's sake. Please buy tickets when I put them on sale or we're going to go bankrupt. Um, but yeah, you know, out there with the whole week of homebrew con and everything else we have to do, we've just started doing that. You know, in recent years, we just, we just pay for it pay someone to do it um but that also makes it a good time and it means we get to hang out with you guys so just save the date saturday june 29th you got nothing else to do come hang out with us i feel like you guys have to have pastel polos where you pop the collars and layer them maybe some loafers why oh because it's, it's East Coast. Yeah, yeah i see what you're saying that's that territory can you yeah. have to dress them yeah i can pick that i can totally do you do this no. i'll give you a budget can i give a yeah. stipend and then <laughs> Don't we already just have Sherbert our Sherbert colors? Don't we already just have our BN Yacht Done. Club outfits? Yeah. That you can't, no, you can't rewear the same outfit that, for a different event. Come on, really? That's, that's only that's if the party's tacky. at Martha's Vineyard. I see. Then we whip out the sports coats. Right. That's fair. Yeah, we that's can't fair. afford that place yet. <laughs> um, all right, you can support us so we don't go bankrupt by doing your Amazon shopping. Just click the Amazon link on our homepage and you shop as normal. You can bookmark it. A lot of people do that. And thank you to all, uh, to all of you who do that already. 
It's a great way to support us. Um, what else can you do? You can sign up and join uh, the BN Army for as little as $2 a month. You're entered into the More Beer monthly donation giveaway, which is a chance to win 100 bucks over to More Beer. And More Beer wants to change your malt game with Viking Malt. Hailing from Northern Europe, Viking Malt is a family-owned malt house since 1883 and is the largest specialty producer of malt in the world. Their base malts are malted from null lox varietals that don't contain the enzyme lipoxygenase, which leads to trans 2 in beer. Duh. Which, of course, is responsible for those stale cardboard flavors. So head over to morebeer.com and brew with ingredients from the future. I think I did the whole thing, Beardy. You did it. Not one stumble. Just wait for next week. Yep. Okay. Uh, what else? All right. Get updates over on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Send your feedback to feedback at thebrewingnetwork.com. We love to hear from you over there. Uh, also, you can click on the AHA link or the BYO link on our homepage. Those are great ways to support us, too. You get yourself a great membership to the AHA or BYO magazine. Um, all right. Well, with JP running late today, uh, do we have a Twitter game, Beardy? Of course we do. Great. Twitter Games brought to you today by Neshaminy Creek Brewing. They've been brewing award-winning beers in Croydon, Pennsylvania since 2012. Proud winners of four Philly Beer Scene Magazine Awards for Brewer of the Year and three for Brewery of the Year. Uh, they got a big-ass tap room with 24 beers on tap, 18 of which are rotating and seasonal. If you can't make it to Croydon, hit up their second location in Jenkintown called the Borough Brew House, which features a full menu and 22 beers on tap, including de- guest taps from local breweries, meteries as well as pennsylvania cider check out neshaminy creek brewing.com all right beardy what's our twitter game today so uh i was thinking over the weekend about a way that we could show appreciation for tasty and i've heard that humans like to exchange gifts to let people know that they're thinking of each other they like all the gifts i bring you guys <laughs> would you bring us this week <laughs> I think I brought you something this week. You did bring me something. She yeah. brought us a brewery to interview. Right. Oh, okay. That's true. Fine. Also, I brought you that distillery <laughs> for why I, I met them also. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I was wondering if we could get some ideas for what would be a nice personalized gift from us to Tasty so that he knows that we're here at the BN thinking about him. A personalized gift from the Brewing Network to Tasty. Right. All right, give us some gift ideas for that. This feels way too altruistic and wholesome for the Brewing Network. Because <laughs> JP didn't do this. Well, yeah, okay. I, and I, was yeah, of, I was thinking of one on the way here, and I wasted all that brain power for the fucking Hallmark Channel over here. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, but we're have 27... you know what these responses are going to be. Like, <laughs> 27 you're you're movies. giving a gift to. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> My Prince Came Home for Christmas, Volume 9. All right, that's our Twitter game today. Play the game. (laughs) I mean, whatever. (laughs) Win a prize. (laughs) Win a prize. You guys just wait. (laughs) All right, let's do some feedback. Uh, Feedback's brought to you today by the Beer Law Center. Go to beerlawcenter.com. Check it out over there. John can take care of your trademark or your brewery filings. Uh, He's a great guy. He's helped me with some more stuff right now. And uh, he's just great at what he does. He understands the industry. So go over to the beerlawcenter.com. That's beerlawcenter.com. So, just one long email in the feedback today. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I that hate The whole it. thing is an email? Yeah. Yeah. It's a decent email. I hate it when I... Uh, Come into work. Bring stuff up that I think <laughs> is like minor and nobody cares about, and then it ends up like a four week long conversation uh-huh. that nobody wanted to have before, by the way, right. until I make some, you know offhand insider comment exactly and then it just goes on for a decade so this again is about having uh women on the show and specifically how i mentioned um that that you know some folks had complained about um the shrill voices of Nicole and Shimke over here. Uh, <laughs> That's correct. <you> know. <laughs> I stand by never. We've never had a woman on this show, and we never will. I stand by that. <laughs> just stick with just make it easy. Just stand by that. How do, you, do you sit by it also? No. Oh. Uh, all right. So let's see. Who's this? Dave writes in. Hello, I've been meaning to write in for a while to talk about how I love Nicole. <laughs> so glad you did. <laughs> as, as one of the rotating judges. On, see, and this is what I mean. Nobody says shit until 
uh, again, I make so I make a comment about how other people have said shit, and right. then out of the woodworks, people are like, "Well, I have always felt like Nicole should be really well. I have never heard from you." That's correct. Anyhow, he says I have been meaning to write in for a while to talk about how I love Nicole as one of the rotating judges on Doctor Homebrew and how you should give her the seat full time. Mm-hmm. And now the recent feedback on the session about getting more women brewcasters finally motivated me. Mm-hmm. Um, at the beginning of the Guinness show, Justin said he cares about content. Of all the Dr. Homebrew shows, the ones with Nicole are the best and what the show should be. She gets into the science of flavors and beyond the basics like SMM turns into DMS, so chill quickly. And how to taste and learn flavors. Again, beyond the basics like movie theater popcorn for a diacetyl. That's far better content than, say, The Sour Hour, (laughs) where you have to listen to Scott playing with the mixing board all hour like a child who just discovered the cow goes moo. (laughs) In between his giggles at Jay's annoyingly bad dad jokes. You'd think I have to admit I agree with this. Let me also just be clear that that show is way longer than an hour if you actually have to sit through it. He edits it down to an hour. I sit here for three and a half hours on sour hour days. Oh my gosh! Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, it's a total waste of my life. That's for two shows, right? Still, it's obviously too sometimes, long, sometimes, it's longer. sometimes, <laughs> man. We, we hit like an hour five on Dr. Homebrew. I'm like, all right, let's mm-hmm. wrap it up, let's get out of here. I can address the Nicole if you want later or now or whatever you want. To well, do. you want me to get through the whole thing first, yeah, or you, you, tell um, me you, drive, you drive me into your garage? Let's through the whole thing. Uh, it goes on, and for those that complain about annoying voices, are they also writing in about the Shine Runner host, who sounds like the walking stereotype of a marketing guy who's trying way too hard to follow the 1950s textbook of persuasion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so far, I'm not in disagreement with this. <laughs> uh, did you ever get complaints about Daniela? I did not. Not a one. <laughs> not, not a single complaint. Who's going to complain about your girlfriend? Uh, maybe you need to force all the females to speak in a German accent to satisfy the tools who want to multitask with, a, with getting a hard on while learning about beer. I just want to say that I obviously can't like prove that all of those folks weren't either chauvinistic or misogynist or trying to get a hard on while having a beer. But some of the feedback was valid feedback about just listening to a voice. And like yeah. if like if my voice was the same, I don't I don't know in other words, I don't know that the gender mattered. I brought it up as a gender issue just that we specifically had experienced because I we haven't had other women on the show, right? <laughs> basically, it, there is a certain aspect of of knowing if you're annoying and taking the feedback. For example, right. Ryan Shar, yes. he knows he's annoying. He's very um, he's very he's on Doctor Homer. Of he's on Doctor yeah. yeah, He's our second judge. He's very self aware of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And off air, he actively talks to me about controlling some of his like normal speech to be, to provide good radio. You, he asked you to help him be less like himself. Yeah. Yeah. So I hit him in the head with a claw hammer okay. and then sent him down the road. That seems to be working. Yeah. You haven't heard from him yet. So. Okay. Uh, he says, maybe the issue is with the ones complaining. What if journalists change their articles based on all the trolls who live in the sad worlds of the comment fields at the bottom of articles? They do. <laughs> right. Yeah. Actually, that actually, we are in that world. That actually happens. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I guess I just I I'm, I don't fully accept the premise that just because there was feedback about a shrill voice that it had to have come from a bad place. Right? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Again, I, I admit I, maybe some of it did. I don't know these people, but my impression of the feedback when I was reading it was not like. No more bitches. They sound so shrill. Like right. it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> like and, that and, wasn't the. <laughs> and, and also that 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 implies that the, all the feedback we ever got about high pitched voices were from men. Right. We got several pieces of feedback off the air from women saying that that was actually really hard to listen to, and and that that's all. It just you know. And I I'll also I also want to go further to say Nicole specifically. And obviously, 
Shicky over here. Shrilky. Shrill the ones on air. <laughs> shrill shrilky. We're never in any way uninvited to participate in the shows, by the way, just so you know. Um, I just, I guess I never gave them a full time job. But, right. you know, uh, but th- that also wasn't due to any vocal talent. Um, so n- neither of them have been uninvited or invited less or anything. I was just bringing up what comments we had gotten about who we have had on the shows. Right. That's all. Yeah. Uh, in fact, and I hope. And I hope Nicole uh, uh, comes back to it. Nicole and I were in development of a show for her mm-hmm. for a period of time. Nice. I guess maybe it would have, maybe I could have avoided all of this if I just mentioned that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, Nicole's very busy, and it, it just you know we never got past the production phase. So yeah, well, I think um, it also has to do with geographic location. Mm-hmm. We all kind of live. Relatively close to the studio, or at least we did when we were kind of, you know, active. And yeah. Kim used to live like Sacramento area, right? No, yeah. you keep thinking that. I know. I don't <laughs> know why. <laughs> Didn't you live far away? Here. That was like seven years ago. Since Didn't I started you? working here, I've always lived in Oakland. Oakland. That's still farther away than it anybody farther, else had yes. to drive. That's true. And uh, Nicole lived farther away than that. She's so, in San Leandro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's, um, you know. That I think does have some some part of uh, of it, you know. What I mean, you need yeah. to find someone local willing to come in for free to travel, and you know what I mean, and do the thing. And there's not a whole sure. lot of people there. No. But also, <laughs> yeah, we've a... never put on fucking Craigslist actively looking for, you know, what it's just yeah, it just doesn't happen sometimes. That's Maybe all. we should try doing that. Yeah. Hang on, I'm trying to see if I can turn the bass up any higher on Kim's microphone. I just, I think it's oh, off. there, that, that's it, Justin. Yeah. Thank you very <laughs> yeah, much. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's uh, 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 I'm sorry I didn't bring any treats for you, but uh, I don't know. I just I sound like Herman Munster. Right? <laughs> that usually, was, usually you will log. <laughs> see, here's where I'm an asshole. If, yeah. if Kim did sound like Herman Munster... Yeah. You would I, say so. I would have her on the show every single week. God, I would it. be like, what do you cost? Like, I need you here. Because <laughs> I think it would be hilarious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it would just be the best. Um, okay. Also, in addition to more Nicole, more shows like Hop and Brew School would be great. I'm proud of that new show, so thanks for saying that. Uh, tons of technical knowledge. Um, Heads and Tails is a nice addition, too. It'd be oh. great if there was more along the lines of How To. I guess is the feedback mm. for heads and tail. Yeah, we've talked about it, but you can't really. Technically, you're not supposed to. Well, I mean, how do, we'd be promoting some illegal activity. So how do we? Yeah, well, you could. I if mean, you how, want to sign on for that, Justin? Then I guess we can start talking about it. I thought you were allowed to talk about it. You're just not allowed to do oh, it. Oh, maybe. Wouldn't I that mean, infringe you're li- on free speech? Yeah, I, you're like allowed to buy manuals on how to build bombs and shit. Oh, that's true. And that's uh, not. I guess. And that's not legal to do. It gets you on certain lists. I guess. Yeah, I guess I don't want to be on anybody's radar. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Believe but. me, you're already on a couple lists. <laughs> uh, also, with okay, so Hop and Brew School How To. Um, I felt like Dr. Homebrew, uh, fair amount of How To. Brew Strong, uh, still tons of How it's To. All how to yeah. um, anyway, I hear you. And as we get new hosts uh, and and sponsors to come in that want to do shows, um, I, I have been leaning towards the the technical knowledge side. I feel like we have the rest covered here on the session. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your consideration from Dave. Okay, D- JP, did you want to address something about the Nicole situation? Oh, well, it's on, just... On Dr. Homer, I guess? Just, you know, a couple of background facts, if you will. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nicole was the first person I actually reached out to to do Dr. Homebrew. Oh, yeah. It was originally going to be her and I, but then she couldn't commit because she got busy with a bunch of stuff, and so then that's how it transitioned into Lee and Brian. But, you know, we reached out after Keith left to Nicole. She was the first person we reached out to. So okay. it isn't like we just abandoned Nicole. It's not like Again, it's yeah. not like that at all. She's never uninvited. She, actively, she was the first person we reached out to both times, you know, either to start the show or to replace Keith. Got right? It. Got it. Um, but she can't come on anymore because she has another job. She's too busy to come back on. But the, the shows that we have had her on have admittedly been great. And, and between the time that we replaced Keith and the last time she was on, she was the first person to be emailed to come on because she does have that great technical knowledge. Mm. She has a different voice, a different uh, mindset, a different approach to flavors. Mm-hmm. She's great at that. Her vocabulary is amazing oh, yeah. for that kind of stuff. And those shows, the guy's right. They were really great. But she just doesn't have the time to come on. So don't think that we're blocking anybody yeah. or preventing people from coming on the show. It's just... 
People are See, busy. That's the thing. And man. this is what I say. I feel like I open a can of worms because I sometimes just narrowly describe a thing because it's a little more entertaining if I just say, "Right, uh, we got, can, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got, you know, wait, what? Sh- yeah, well. Shrill voices, I, you know." Yeah. And then I realize, okay, nobody else hears all the other things that are going on in my head when I say that. Yeah. And now here we are. Well, it's it's supposed to be entertaining, and I think yeah. what you did is you made a joke that aligned <laughs> with the audience's comments and jokes right and that's not really wasn't the facts it was just you were just playing off of the audience right you know maybe dave doesn't understand that yeah okay are we done we're done all right speaking of jokes though oh shit i'm really disappointed to hear that you are not going to homebrew con yes and i'll tell you why all right i recently dabbled in stand-up oh wow and I loved it. Okay. It was really what? exciting. It was like at a party. It wasn't like at a on a stage, but it was right. like a party where like a bunch of people were performing and I actually sat down and for the first time wrote stand up. Like I wrote okay. a set. You wrote a set. All right. And it was really exciting. Yeah. Like I felt like like back when I was on the radio for the first time or when I was in a band for the first time. And I was thinking of doing some stand-up at BNA 14, and I was hoping that you would be there to do some also. I would definitely have done that. Um, But now you can't now. I can't make it. Yeah, Taryn can't get... uh, That's a long chunk of time to take off, so... So I got to get Sam to open for me? (laughs) Oh, boy. Sam can even make it. (laughs) Oh, no, don't say that. Uh... Hey, uh, actually, I could probably get some time off. I mean, you know, if if you're free and you need somebody, Justin. Do you do you want to do some stand up, Beardy? Oh, I thought you were going to tell me no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Like, I actually, am free. if you bomb, then it oh. just sets me up to succeed Win. even yeah. even yeah. more. I did think about it when you said this the last time. I'm like, I could totally just dive for Justin. Yeah, <laughs> and then he just hits a home run. Yeah. So wait, so it was at a party. Yeah, it was like at a party where uh, everyone was like, we set up a stage and a bunch okay. of a bunch of people were like jamming and playing music and things like this. Right, and right. Uh, the way it started was that Andy Wood had said for his thing, he's going to do stand up. OK. And then it got me thinking about it. I was like, I've actually kind of always wanted to try it. So Same. I was like, yeah. All right, I'm going to open for you. I'm going to write five minutes or whatever. Yeah. And open for you. Um and anyway, he ended up not doing it. <laughs> but I was so excited about this set that I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go do it anyway. Do it now. And I kind of killed. Do your set. No, no, it was written for the friends. Ah, uh, okay. You know, so... Right. It's a lot of crowd work. It what is. What are you going to do in this crowd? Well, that's why I felt like HomebrewCon or BNA14 might be a good place to try it again, because... I also know that crowd. Right. Right. So I feel like I'm, it's like baby steps to writing for an audience that doesn't have to know a thing. So right. the first one was I knew everybody there. I could roast them a little bit and, and make fun of our quirks as a group. The homebrewers, I know homebrewers, so I can maybe, so like, you- it's another genre I can write for before, like, if I like it again, you know, for like maybe doing an open mic where like it's a genre anybody can hear. Do you right, what I'm right. Well, so are you doing jokes or are you just roasting? Because I because I feel those are very different. Roasting. Uh, there were some jokes. There there was some roasting and some jokes. Okay. There were some full on jokes. I remember okay. the roasting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They all involve making fun of people. Well, that's roasting. Kenny. I know. That's yeah. why I asked him because <laughs> yeah. I'm like, does he know that? Uh, they did not all, almost all. Okay. That's... And making fun of me. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to balance it out but, that way. But I watch plenty of comedians who you just mix that in your set. Like, yeah. you know, I, I understand that there's like specifically a roast mm-hmm. and you can specifically roast people. But you're always observing and then making commentary on what you observe. Right. In this case, I was observing my group of friends, and I would do the same, you know, at, at a homebrewers thing. So just right. because it's a joke that might make fun of homebrewers doesn't mean it's only roasting. You're writing a joke making fun of homebrewers. 
I mean, that happens too. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, what's the deal with three piece fucking airlock? professional comedians over here that know about writing <laughs> fucking jokes? Hey, I just asked the question what you were doing. I wasn't criticizing. We're collecting information. I was we literally just here to support you. We're I was curious. just wondering. I was just curious yeah. if you were just going to roast or if you were going to if you were doing jokes. That's all. Because you had only said roasting, so you didn't. You know, yeah, I'm just clarifying. Uh, I think both. And, yeah. and, all right, don't and, you fucking yell at me. And <laughs> roasting. Hey, what is it about uh, this room? I can't get no respect. <laughs> yeah, I can't get no fermentation. Forget it. I'm not doing it. I'm Good. just not going to do That's it. That's all we wanted. <laughs> just get a mallet and a watermelon. You'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. Or get a watermelon and a mallet and that. hit the mallet with a watermelon. Oh, 21st century. Yeah, what I did there. Just change it up. Whole script. Here. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool, man. Uh, I'm glad that you did that. Well, been, now I don't know. Well, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, but but I, I think I get caught up in like the nuances of it all, and I and I, I, I write something I think is funny, and then I reread it, and I go, that's not fucking you? funny. You? Yeah. No. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. Um, so I had that happen, and then and so how do you, that's I my rewrote. Thing is, how do you, yeah. Like, as, so I, I know, like, comedians, like, they go out every night of the week and... And try the material, and it's and it's not just that they're. I used to think it was just that they were trying out new material. Mm -hmm. They're also they're tweaking it, right? Like you just try a new way to deliver it. And so I even did that. I was just performing it to myself on the long drive to this party. Yeah. But it, it, but a couple of the jokes like really evolved from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. Like like one, I was like, okay, that's that's kind of funny. Like it'll be funny enough because people know this about that person. But then I completely changed it. Where I didn't even say the punchline at the end, I acted the punchline, and it was way funnier. Okay. So anyway, yeah, like you just rewrite. If it's not funny, you just fucking right. rewrite. Right, right, right. And you got to keep working it. Right. And by the way, this was the stuff that a guy got all excited about. Like it was really fun. It was a nice. challenge. Good. Like, look, I can do this fucking radio show in my sleep right. for God's sake. Yeah. Um, clearly. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy <laughs> being here, but it's a, it's a piece of cake. Right, right, right. Uh-huh. You know. Yeah. No, I feel you. 100%. Like, give me another interview. Here we go. Where'd you make beer? Would you make it out of? How, what fucking temperature to ferment it at like it's <laughs> right it's a piece of cake right the the challenge of making people laugh in that format was exciting in a different way, yeah yeah well that's good and man. difficult yeah i also think i do well with the fear of failure like the mm. it's a the the live or die moment is exciting for me you okay. know like the the success or fail right pushes me and uh that's what i liked about it okay well hey that's good man was there a big physical aspect of your humor, like Dane Cook style, you know? Where, mm-hmm. no. no. Dane Cook. <laughs> you might as well have said John Candy <laughs> like, style. Like runs all <laughs> over. Yeah. Well, Dane Cook really yeah. physical? Dane Cook style. Right. Physical like, a, you know, Charlie Chaplin-esque. Like, <laughs> right. yeah. Dane okay, Cook we're is... Talk, we were Dane, talking like 12 years ago. Dane Cook is... When he was is, at his peak. Is Kim's modern <laughs> comic... Well, high mark. <laughs> well, it, it is a good example. He like runs around stage, yeah. very aggressive. Yeah, uh, he's active. No, no, I just kind of stand there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's stand up. It's not run around. Yeah, and he did smoke too. Sure. He smoked while on stage. I think that's also a benefit. Well, you for have him. to, so you can flick the butts at people. <laughs> yeah, he's getting to smoke while performing. You can't smoke in the studio. Mm. Right, I did like that. Well, now I don't know if I don't got no one to open. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Let's work on hologram technology. Over here. <laughs> yeah, let's see what we can do. Do maybe, a hologram of me. I'll be there. Maybe I can, I can get Andy Wood to come out and open for me. Oh, yeah. Nice. yeah. You know, or I'll be stuck with Beardy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll write for you. I, I, wrote a, I wrote a joke, a stand-up. I was working at, it's funny you mentioned it. A I was joke working or, on a, or a No, I was set. working on like uh, a like a, a you know, like five minutes, like yeah. you were saying, right? That's kind of like the classic stand-up, like do five minutes. Yeah. Uh, you want to hear it? Yeah. And not the full set, but here's like a snippet, right? Okay. Y'all ever get irrationally angry? Yes. I mean, that, that's, oh, you that's, expect- kind of, that's kind of all I got. It's just that. <laughs> I thought you were waiting that's for an therapy. answer. That's therapy. That's cognitive behavioral therapy. Why did you? Therapy. That's not. A, why did you go? That's not a. Com, that's complete. No, that's all I got. That's that's kind of where I stop. I have <laughs> oh, that's, that's a very point. that's a very tight five you have. There. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. working on it. I'm working it's on it. But it's, it's a good. You know, I yeah. feel like there's a lot to go. A, a lot of pathways to go after that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Although you're even with that. You're you're close to you're just like a variation of Seinfeld, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's with the irrational anger? <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, What's the deal? Yeah. I guess we're supposed to analyze it. Uh, well, you, I mean, you offered it up. What did you think <laughs> yeah. was going to happen? Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> How many times did you go over that? Uh, this is a joke. Yeah, but that was the joke. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, well anyway, if, if you want to write jokes. 
I'll consider, you'll deliver them. I'll consider. <laughs> no, I don't know if I can, my set. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about it. Okay. Maybe we'll talk about. It. I do like writing. There are some comedians that have a whole team of writers underneath them. <laughs> yeah, Chris Rock. That sounds great. Yeah, <laughs> right. uh, yeah. kind of a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. That sounds awesome. Amy Schumer. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hey, that's cool. I'm glad that you're doing something that uh, that you enjoy doing. It was exciting, and I was thinking of doing that BNA 14, but now I don't know. Mm. I like that you dabbled at a party, as that's how most people dabble in, you know, things like drugs and different <laughs> kinds of sex. Yeah, he's way beyond that. Yeah, Comedy, yeah. stand-up, it's you an, know. It's an easy crowd. It's a party yeah, sure. activity. They all yeah. like you. I, mean, I can do amyl nitrate in my sleep. That's what <laughs> I was going to say. I can also now do drugs in my sleep. Like, that stuff's it's just easy for me. <laughs> It was something challenging and new yeah. is what made it exciting. Well, so, that's cool, man. Uh, all right. Well, whatever. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, turn something uh, cool and positive into, uh, I don't know. Man. Just forget it. All right. <laughs> all right. When we come back, we've got Allegory Brewing in the studio. Shimki, are you banging one of these guys? Is that the deal? What? Oh, I don't know. Never met them in my life. You've never. Oh, I thought oh. you said don't you don't know, know if you're banging one of yeah. them. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, might be. I think that about every guest you come in for. I'm always like, wait a second, are you banging one of these guys? <laughs> it's only like a few times. <laughs> what? You've only banged this one a few times, or there's only been a few yeah. guests that you've banged. We'll leave that. <laughs> we don't need to talk about my tindering experiences uh, you, in the beer Is it industry. still very tinder? How you bumbled into it? Oh, yeah. Well, there's the last that, segment you're for using that. that as a that verb. Was a bumbling. That was terrible. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Jesus. Workshop that a little bit more. No, it was funny. Just people don't get it. Go ahead. Can we get out of here? <laughs> oh, one of those other jokes that people don't get. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. It's with Bumble. Tinder. We're not on Bumble left. is a verb. It's stumble and bumble. It's the thing. You guys don't get it. Swipe my left fault. or swipe right. Oh, I got it's it. not my fault. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. You still on Tinder, Jim Key? No. God, I'm no. Off. Oh. no. No. We covered that last time. Didn't we? <laughs> I never showed you guys my tiger photo collage, though. What? What is that? So, men do this thing where they, so many of them mm-hmm. have photos of themselves with tigers. They're like, they're what? traveling to Thailand. Yes. I've, to- I've told you about this. I have not it listened. Is, so there's like, there's so weird. So there's this thing that like women will do a lot of the same stuff. Like they'll post yoga photos. Okay. And the guy thing is them in a tiger. <laughs> and it's like, they're usually like tranquilized tigers. Oh my in God. Some yeah. san- uh, quote unquote sanctuary in Thailand. Oh, wow. And it's a thing. I swear to God, it's a thing. And I noticed mm. it. I'm like, this can't. Th- is this just my experience? Is this just the Bay Area? Uh-huh. And then my female friend in D.C., I told her, I was like, look out for these. Send them to me. Yeah. And then my friend in Sacramento, I had her do the same thing. It's a freaking universal thing. Oh, guys. Like, and then I asked a few guys about this. And their theory is that it makes them look like, you know, they have a wild side. I'm like, oh, my God, that's too, that's too on the nose. Like, that's, come on, that's ridiculous. King of the jungle. But it's that truly I, a thing. Maybe they're going to I mean, Thailand they're for... they're like, for, I have a picture of myself with a tiger, obviously, and putting that on my profile. You know, I legit I have would collages. Never, I would never no. put that on my profile. No. I was on the dating app for, like, three months a couple of years ago, mm. and in just those few months, mm. I, I swear to God, I will show you on the break, I have a minimum of, I think, like... 35 tiger photos? You need to start a, a, just an Instagram page for it. Um, oh, that's true. Oh, but I have to block out their faces. That takes go. extra time. How that's... many did you meet in person? <laughs> yeah. Zero. Four. Uh, with that was your turn off? No. Maybe they <laughs> just you went... put that in your turn offs? Guys with uh, <laughs> tiger photos? With... Oh, here's a set for you guys. I already What's did it. with the tiger? God I already damn did it. it. Yeah, mm. you didn't hear. Too bad. <laughs> Maybe they went to that Thailand for species reassignment surgery because it's cheaper <laughs> over there. And so this mm. is a before and after photo, and you're being very insensitive. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's also a lot more, you know, there's a lot of other ways you could show that you have a wild side. Like, like I could show all my receipts from therapy, for example, and That's show true, you right? how crazy or, I am. Or CVS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, or like photos of a giant rail of cocaine across your living room floor. Like, That's true. What, or, what's with the tiger? Yeah. Or shopping at Target versus Walmart. Like, you don't mind paying extra for pencils. <laughs> right. What do you care? There's other... Right? Why, just why JP got married early. <laughs> <laughs> early? Was that early? Uh, no, it was not early. <laughs> oh, I guess it was for me. Yeah, was that early? <laughs> yeah. Three years ago. Uh... Okay. All right. Well, share your collage with us sometime. Yeah. That is, <laughs> Can't that wait. Is, that is fascinating. What a douchey thing to do. That's Maybe it's weird. just they're well, well traveled. Well, see, and then I would like to, you know what we should do is we should start a podcast, reach mm. out to these people and interview them. 
Tinder people who pose with photos. The tiger oh, and the tigers. Right. To see if, like if I it worked Tinder before or after uh, after okay. you post a tiger photo. What was the percentage of increase or Check decrease? Check this out. Well, I can't okay. see because it's eighty yards yeah. away. There's so many. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. I could just take swipe. your word for yeah. it. I guess. Uh, tell me how many times I can swipe before I run into a dick pic. <laughs> no, no. Just Either keep direction going. you can oh, swipe a bunch. You'll pics. see a whole bunch of them. Yeah. She has her other phone. For There's so many. These they creep me out. Actually. Did they just break into a so zoo? Yeah, like, what, what especially there, there's one here with a guy, like the tiger's like laying down, like you said, mm-hmm. clearly tranquilized. Put it on the camera. And the guy's just like over the top of it, of this poor tiger. Like, he, it looks like he's trying to get a date. He's like, look at me with the cute tiger. You know, the, you know what photo I would post? I would post the one. Terrible. I'd post the one that where the tiger finally bit me in the face. Oh, for sure. Like, that's the <laughs> or like that's the, the action photo. shot of it swiping at me. <laughs> yeah. Like be like his tiger and swipe right or whatever the good swipe is. Oh, uh, there's a what? full body one of the one I was just talking about where the guy's actually spooning the poor cat. Yeah, so I took screenshots uh, of all of them and then I put them together in three different collages. Oh my god! Wasn't I'm like, there... we could create cal- we can create like three calendars of just the ones that. And keep in mind, these are ones that only I've seen. So if I never swiped on these people's photos, right. there's so many more out there that I still have yet to capture. <laughs> you you start so a whole many. website. <laughs> yeah. I'm very confused. Douchebags with the tigers. Thing. Yeah, it's very Dot bizarre. Com. Wasn't there a, a Hangover movie where Mike Tyson had a tiger and that was a whole thing? Yeah. Is this hangover? maybe an homage, yeah, homage to that? Was, is, that? was it in the first one? Was there a Hangover three. movie? No, because four. then it would be yeah. funny. This yeah, is, I don't think they're satirical. Oh, really? No, no. no. They're I, like, oh. I, look where I've traveled. Look what I get to be next to. <laughs> I paid X amount of dollars to go to this guess, shady place. Guess where my finger is. Look at that guy's job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, these people are strange. All right. God bless. I do want to know if it works. Yeah. Right. Well, it didn't <laughs> yeah. work with Shimke, apparently. Well, but that's one out of 3.5 billion, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Shimke's standards are too high, though. Shimke's standards are too... I think they're too oh adjacent. God. I think they're just... Mm, it's, like an, it's like, you know those movies where you go, you travel to an alternate universe? Right. That's Shimke's standards. They're sort of normal, but just for somebody else with entire, entirely different brain... Yeah, physiology. it's true. The couple of guys I know that you've dated are really strange also, just yeah. in, a, in a different way. Well, I can't wait to see how tonight goes. <laughs> so that's a yes. <laughs> Me too. All right. To the other question. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll All right, take a go. quick break. When we come back. I will Allegor- be here. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. You're staying right there. Allegory Brewing. We'll be right back. It's the session. Do you know the three most important rules in brewing? Sanitation, sanitation, and sanitation. And no one does it better than Five Star Chemicals. Five Star knows sanitation. You can only sanitize clean equipment. And Five Star knows how to clean, too. For craft brewers and home brewers, Five Star has what you need to keep your fermenters, serving tanks, kegs and draft lines sparkling and free of any beer-spoiling bacteria. PBW, caustic, acid cleaners, star sand, and Santa Clean, lubricants and defoamers, pH stabilizers, and more. Five Star Chemicals has cleaning supplies, safety supplies, heat exchangers, pumps, hoses, and valves. And Five Star is proud to offer eco-friendly products that exceed customer expectations. If you have a cleaning problem, you need the Five Star Solution. Visit FiveStarChemicals.com or call 800-782-7019. 800-782-7019. And get the Five Star Treatment today. Hi, this is Wayne Wombles from Cigar City Brewing, and you're listening to the session on the Brewing Network. Welcome back to the program. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. This next segment is brought to you today by White Labs. Have you visited the vault for home brewers? It's White Labs' collection of specialty one-of-a-kind one of a kind yeast strains, and you're able to pre-order and decide which strains are released to home brewers. All you have to do is visit whitelabs.com slash the vault and place a pre-order on the strain that you'd like to use. Once it reaches 150 orders, White Labs will release the yeast and ship it directly to your doorstep. And there's 
There's good news for pro brewers, too. If you want access to the Vol strains for your next brew day, place a minimum order of one and a half liters through yeastman.com or by contacting a customer service rep, and you'll get access to their unique specialty strains, too. White Labs. Oh, I was so close. So close. <clears throat> You listen. did good, though. So I'm going to take up a new hobby now. That's, it's that's even true. more difficult. Than, yeah. Have you thought about stand-up? It's stupid. Yeah, yeah. A stupid thing that I can apparently do in my sleep. Uh, all right. Allegory Brewing is in the studio <laughs> with us. Uh, we've got Charlie Van Meter, who's a head brewer over there, and David Sanguinetti. Uh, welcome to the studio, guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Charlie, you've been on the show before. Indeed. You got drunk on the show before, I feel like. Or, I don't know. Or, I think you, you guys got, gave me a lot of credit for not being drunk considering right. I'd been here all day. And now, so we got drunk after, probably. Yeah, we kept going. <laughs> that sounds about right. But huh? not too far. I had a flight at like 6 a.m. I think okay. I left your house at like 4. Damn. Yeah. Was I still awake, do you think? No. Okay, no. that's good. <laughs> Sometimes that <laughs> happens. Uh, Dave, you've never been on the program, though, before. No, I have not. Uh, hang on. Now i got to figure out your microphone situation. Uh, is it not on at all? Are you there? Oh. Hey, there I am. Well, why doesn't but that's a different mic. you got two mics, dude. Mm. All, right. all right. What's you, going on over there, bars. You're gonna, Yeah, you're going to have to sh- share with Shimki there. Uh, uh, won't be the... F- gross. Oh, I, like, yeah. I mean, I got a whole... Yeah. <laughs> oh, you got your stand-up ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are you guys are dating though? Did you meet on Tinder? <laughs> Where'd you guys meet? Uh, yeah, um, missed connections on Craigslist. Is that what? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a new app for brewers Vintage. called Mashed In. Yeah. Kim Mashed is like, in. Uh, I don't know, it might have been the classified ads though. <laughs> I can Penny read. Saver. I can read Shimki's missed connection now. She's like, um, the one brewer without a beard. <laughs> I was also the other brewer without a beard. <laughs> the other the other beer girl fan without a beard. You looked at me. <laughs> yeah. I thought maybe I was standing on your foot, but I can't tell. You actually looked right through me, but I waved my <laughs> arms dramatically until you <laughs> noticed I was there. I was in the way to the bathroom in line for the can release. You, you asked me you to, had no tiger photos. You asked you me to excuse you, and right. I said I couldn't. <laughs> then you filed a lot of restraining orders against me, <laughs> but I figured him out in court. Dave, do you I have like any? A girl with persistence. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like key to your heart. Yeah. Do you have any pictures of yourself with tigers, Dave? No, I, apparently I need one. Yeah, like, yeah. Bad. Now a, a liger, though. Yeah. Right. Ooh. Can well, we you get might a not have... tiger. Oh, that's a great idea. I mean, the parking lot's fenced. I mean, <laughs> yeah, good, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Sure, there's not your insurance won't go up that much right. for that. What do you think's more What's expensive, insurance? a brewery license or a tiger license? Because mm. you do need to like license them and shit. Yeah, uh, you do. An intern. Mm. Good no, question. Go. And it depends on how good you are at smuggling them in, because then you could just get away with it. Pretty good. All right. Well, tell me when Allegory Brewing started, Dave. You're the founder, right? Yes, I am. Okay. So, uh, when and how and why did you start <laughs> Allegory? Um, well, Allegory officially started in. August of 2017. Okay. Um, uh, I spent about a year and a half at build out. Okay. Before then. In McMinnville, Oregon. Yes. Okay. Majestic McMinnville, Oregon. Yeah. But you um, weren't a brewer before you did that. I was and am not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was your previous life like? What did you do? Um, well, right before the, uh, I own, I still own the Bitter Monk, which is a uh, beer bar and bottle shop in McMinnville, which is celebrating its fifth anniversary uh, at the end of the month. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, before then, I was down here in the Bay Area, actually, uh, working in the medical device field. Okay. For uh, a bunch of years. Like, what are we talking like prosthetic penises or something? What Filter. kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the markup is insane. <laughs> no um, sense, yeah. <laughs> and the technology, <laughs> the technology translates over to yeah. brewing anyway, so... Yeah, it was a French company, though, so it, just, it wasn't actually, like, that impressive. <laughs> I see. <laughs> uh, all right, so you have a bottle shop, though. Yes. Uh, and then at, at what point, or why, rather, do you decide to go into, into brewing? Because uh, I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, really, it's a... Uh, it's a couple of things. Um, one is McMinnville. We're uh, really lucky and blessed to be with a lot of the things that make brewing make sense okay. um, in, a, in an economical standpoint. 
Um, we have consistent water all year long. Uh, we have the cheapest uh, water and electricity rates in the state because we have our own actual like owned municipality. Um, That's and, great. Yeah, and we've got all the other stuff around us that we you know we could take advantage of. We have 250 wineries within 20 miles of us. Wow. So, yeah. So barrels, which I've always been really interested in, those type of beers. Um, you know, hanging out in Sonoma County, mm-hmm. you know, cutting my teeth, like you know, going to Russian River. Is that where like you were that. from in the Bay Area in Sonoma County? Um, yeah, well, I, I grew up in McMinnville area. So, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I spent uh, a couple of years in the city, a couple of years in Marin, and then a couple of years in Sonoma County. Got it. Yeah. 250 brewery, or wineries in a 20 minutes away, that's a ton. Do you, do you get a lot of tourism in McMinnville in general? or We do. We get about yeah. a million people through town every year. Wow. Um, that's a lot of white people. So many white people. Yeah. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Karens. I mean, mm, yeah. Yeah, a lot of bob cuts. <laughs> yeah, saying. yeah, yeah. The, the, the wine weekend outfits, uh, you can spot them a mile away. Right. Yeah. That's so. how you found Shimke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's how I found Charlie, actually. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you were wearing a sundress. <laughs> it yeah. matched your long hair. It was really I asked nice. for a Bro. beer. <laughs> oh, no. I, I had shorter hair when I got the job. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And you then I had the job, so then I don't have to cut you know, my hair anymore. Yeah. Good that's call. the perfect yeah. relationship. Yeah. You you look clean cut to land it, and then afterwards you don't give a shit. You, you should yourself. talk to my wife about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's marriage. <laughs> Charlie, did you start with the company? Uh, when yeah, yeah. Uh, it was pretty funny, actually. Um, I was out on the coast after brewing at Logston for a little bit, um, working at Yahats Brewery. Um, actually, my wife worked there, too. She was running director of brewery operations, and um, she had an awesome opportunity come up to go work for Crosby Hop Farm. And nice. was it the Portland Farmhouse Beer Fest and talking to Josh Gerges from the Commons at the time and Dave walks up and he goes, Do you do you guys know each other? And I'd heard of the beer bar a few um bunch of times before, but had never made it out. And he goes, Hey, and I'm starting this brewery, here's what I'm working on. I was like, Oh, awesome. Yeah, who's your brewer? Uh yeah, I was about to start looking and Right. Like, well, no kidding. Right place, so, right time. Yeah. You build it, they will come. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, and you had uh, brewed at a couple places. You, you mentioned Logston, uh, Yahats, is that how you say it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there. Um, so you had a little brewing experience. You were the head brewer at uh, Yahats, is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so you had a little bit of a resume. Uh, what what convinced you to to hire Charlie, though? Did you have to try some of his beers, or did you go on faith? That's, kinda, <laughs> that's even a deeper story, really. Yeah, we actually had like a really shared Cro- history. Yeah, we've crossed paths without knowing it a few times. Okay. Yeah. So when I moved up from California, I moved to the Hillsdale neighborhood in Portland, and the new brew pub in that area was Sasquatch Brewing, and their new head brewer was Charlie Van Meter. Got it. And so that was kind of my hang for a while because I was unemployed, so that meant I spent a lot of time at the brewery. Gotcha. Um, and so really been following Charlie's career for a long time. We've been at some festivals at the same time up in uh, Hood River, Parkdale area when he was at Logsdon. So I was very familiar with Charlie's beard, just yeah, not yeah, Charlie just himself. A bunch okay. of, yeah, a bunch okay. of mutual friends that we never really connected. Yeah. Okay. So once you realized that you had spent a, a fair amount of time enjoying the beer that you didn't even know was brewed by him, you figured this could work out. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's a small circle in Oregon, and you know who's there, and and I knew Charlie's beers and what styles of beers he really like excelled at, sure. and was the things that were interesting for for me to at least like that theoretically wanted to focus on. Excellent. Okay. Well, why don't we try some of your beer right now while we can? That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, the first beer we've got in our glass is your Mexican lager. How do you say this one? Sabra? Sabra. 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 <laughs> oh, God, where's Doc when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I assume uh, Sabro hops? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this- we brewed this with our buddies uh, from Eugene. Um Brewing beer is really fun. Brewing beers with your friends is even more fun. You guys are Uh, big on collaborations. Yeah, and not like intentionally by the business model. It just kind of happens organically. Okay. And, you know, some collaborations you talk about for a long time and they never happen. And some of them you just make happen. And this was one of those. So what brewery was it in Eugene? It's Claim 52. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Tell me about the beer. Uh, So it's a... Little under twenty five percent flake maize, and uh, the rest is Bohemian Pilsner malt from Weirman. 
And then uh, about a pound per barrel uh, Sabro hops, which Claim 52 had brought up. I'd never really played with them before. I just heard about them. And, man, you open that bag, and it's it's a hop that smells not like hops. It's kind of crazy. It's like yeah. big coconut and rum aromas and yeah. maybe some vanilla and wood. Some peach uh, in there, too. Yeah, yeah like, like, this, a right? like a white peach Like a white peach, yeah. yeah. That was yeah. the Handy first thing I got. Yeah. And now, then, we talked about this a little bit at the fest on Saturday, yeah. too. And, and I think I it was a, a perfect fest beer. The, oh, great Sunny fest day. beer. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, in the aroma, there's that, that white peach. But then when you taste it, I think it is kind of like that Caribbean, you know, flavor you're talking about. That kind of little coconut, little rum. Mm-hmm. Um, but all that's pretty subtle in this beer. Yeah, and then it finishes nice and clean like, you know, a mm-hmm. typical Mexican lager would. Mm-hmm. Nice and crushable. Yeah. That's a delicious beer. Man. Yeah. Isn't Thanks. that good? Yeah. So That's I had good. tasted it before I knew what it was, and I didn't call out Mexican lager. I, I asked you. I mean, I knew it was mm-hmm. a lager of some kind, but oh, I, didn't no go, I didn't go like, oh, me- great Mexican lager, because um, it's just a little bit different. Yeah, it has totally. all the dryness and like clean finish that you'd want out of a Mexican lager. But uh, yeah, maybe it's just that Sabro is, makes it really different. It's wild, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those that you uh, taste out of the tank and you go, oh, this is going to be cool. <laughs> You're like, all right. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah the, the aroma doesn't match the flavor to me really mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. It's just very strong with the, the white peach. And then it does have a bit like coconutty kind of wood tannin. But then it does have uh, the, the nice corn finish, too. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. nice and dry. Yeah. It's it's blowing my mind right now. Just like <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what to think about it. It's good. Yeah, we grabbed that uh, K Fusing. K Bueno yes. yeast strain from uh, Imperial for okay. this one. Yeah. Okay. It, that's a Mexican lager strain yep. that they have. Yep. Um, yeah, I get um, rose petals on the end. Oh yeah. Mm, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'll give you that one, JP. Thanks. Why not? Thanks, baby. <laughs> Appreciate it. And so you dry hopped the uh, Sobro in this? Yeah. Okay. I want to say it might have been like three and a half pounds in a seven barrel for a dry hop. It was pretty low. And then uh, heavy whirlpool charge. Mm. Okay. Do you know where they got it? I've never even heard of that hop before. Uh, I think it's a YCH variety. Okay. I think so, too. Yeah. I think we were talking about it in one of the Hops and Brew School uh, podcasts recently. Oh, I'll have to check it out, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you should check out using these hops. Oh, yeah. They're really nice. I need to get another brewery first. And I see you guys put this in tall boy cans. I like that decision. Yeah, it's a crowler machine that we have uh, at the brewery. Okay. So, October Designs, one one of the manual ones. Mm. Yeah, that's great. That's good stuff. Yeah. And so this is probably grown right near you, Dave, the Sabro hops. I think that's a Yakima hop. It, yeah, it's yeah. Yakima. So, okay. So. Yeah, this is a, an outlier. Um, I've got great great friends even beyond my wife working at Crosby. And they're, <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah. Uh, I've used Crosby hops for uh, a lot of my career. And Okay. Uh, great people over there, great support, great yeah. product. Yeah, we've had them on the show before, too. Yeah, I think yeah. I've heard Blake on here before. Yeah, so. yeah, good guy. Free delivery, like five blocks away. Yeah, exactly. My wife uh, just brings them home. So <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you guys have a seven-barrel system? Is that what you said? Yep. Okay. And uh, how's that going so far? I mean, Busy. Do, you, do you feel like, oh, we should have gone bigger yet? or I don't know. It gives yeah. us the flexibility to play with styles we wouldn't otherwise justify. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, even this beer, for example, it's... Super delicious, but wouldn't necessarily have just jumped in both feet on a huge batch of it. Yeah. So now that you've had it, would you? Well, yeah, but I don't have any more Sabro. <laughs> <laughs> All gone. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Okay. Do but, you guys feel nervous uh, having loggers in McMinnville along with Heater Allen right down the road? No, no pressure. They're, no great, pressure. they're great friends. Okay. Yeah. Great beers out of Heater Allen. Yeah. You guys must go drink there. Of course. Yeah. They make killer lagers. <laughs> yeah. So we get them in bottles here sometimes, and yeah. they go pretty fast. It's, that's great, clean. Yeah, I saw some over in the case. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's good stuff, too. How many breweries are in your region, your area? Let's say your 20-mile radius. Well, so right actually. Or, yeah, or how about the 10-block radius? Yeah, oh. we have four breweries within um, like a 10-minute walking wow. Um, wow. distance bus. Like That's kind of like the center of, of where we're at. Um, we've got... Like you said, Heater Allen, which is mm-hmm. probably the farthest away at a, a whopping six blocks. Okay. And then we've got Grain Station Brewing. Um, and, and then basically across the street, we've got uh, Golden Valley Brewing. Okay. And then we, um, 
we have two uh, gluten-free breweries in town, so we have the most per capita in the United States. I guess so, so yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. Um, uh, and then it gets a little sparse uh, going out. Um, uh, How, I'm sorry. Let me pause you there for a second. How long have the two gluten-free breweries been open? I think one of them opened up right around when we did, so they're coming up on two years, maybe. Okay. And then another one relocated from another small town, I, see. I think, and they opened up about six months ago. I ask because I find it hard to believe that there's enough market for that in one town like that. I mean, it's kind of a... I guess it's growing, but it's a bit of a niche, isn't it, like to do gluten-free? And is there enough people buying that for two breweries? What do you think? Be honest with me. They're not listening. They, they don't listen. Don't <laughs> um, first off, very nice guys. Okay. Um, <laughs> sure. Sure they are. Um, a lot of bottles, I think. Okay. I think uh, they do a lot of shelf, uh, shelf space. I don't okay. know how much. Um, they're they're both vastly different, trying different things. Okay. Um, but um, uh, I think they get enough they are lucky enough to be able to like there's only x amount on the co- on the west coast so they get shelf space so okay. that's how they're going to go for retail that and makes sense okay. benover division has done some interesting projects he's brought over to sample out like uh cool mixed culture stuff that i'd never experienced as gluten free okay it's pretty fun mm-hmm. okay some sour stuff mm-hmm. interesting I don't. Yeah, I've never had a sour. I've only had yeah. like a you know gluten free pale ale, gluten free IPA, a few things like that. Oh, that's more than I've had. Never yeah. something a little more experimental. What a, that's actually a great idea. Why wouldn't you try to do something a little more experimental like that? Sure, it's kind of lower body, anyways. Yeah, mm-hmm. let the let the yeast do the talking instead of the malt. There you go. Lack of there instead of go. the lack of malt. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Zero. Basically, yeah. you know what this beer has? A absence of malt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Four points. Malt free. It has yeah. a remarkable absence <laughs> yeah. of malt. I could taste where the malt should be. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the next beer in our glass, which uh, is the Wheelbarrow of Swords IPA. Jesus Christ. <laughs> who, who named this beer? Shimke? It was Shimke. Right? <laughs> uh, this is a beer that named itself. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, not because of how it tastes, but because of the beer that was in Tank and the story that happened uh before that is it a good story yeah it's great okay. yeah i mean um, everyone likes swords right <laughs> yeah. yeah and some people like swords more than others yeah. <laughs> some people like wheelbarrows <laughs> yeah so um i was in portland uh at a home of a, a head brewer um who shall me rename remain nameless there she'll be there we go yeah she'll be okay. um and uh we were picking up a yeast pitch in his garage and I got the code to his garage. Nobody was home. And I look around and immediately text Charlie, who has a wheelbarrow full of swords in their garage? Wow. There was actually a wheelbarrow full of swords. Yeah, and a pizza box. Um, <laughs> On top could, of the swords? <laughs> no, underneath. <laughs> okay. That should be the double IPA version. That was this. the trap. And the pizza. <laughs> Try to go for the pizza. <laughs> yes. Wow. Um, the double IPA was sword play, by the way. Okay. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, so that was... A little bit weird. Text back and forth, and we're like, "Well, that's, that, that's beer. a beer name." Now yep. it's a great name. Once you know that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Once you know that thing exists, then you're like, "It's a great fucking name." Yeah. Next time you have Logston on the show, you have to tell him to bring at least a few swords. Wow. And he will. For okay. Sure. I bet. <laughs> wow. And, yeah. Don't have to ask me twice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the, uh, wow. If you check in on Untapped, it, the wheelbarrow full of swords is the picture for everything. Nice. Right, so. Okay. I love that. Well, tell us about the beer. Um, it's just going for kind of a, a West Coast light body. Um, try and juice it up a little bit because um, that aspect of uh, the hazy styles really appealed to me mm-hmm. with still having kind of an assertive bitterness and an ultimate drinkability. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like a, a dangerous lawnmower lager beer, but not a lager. It's an IPA. Yeah. <laughs> This is a solid West Coast IPA. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, and it's like a little it. bit juicy, mm-hmm. but you've chosen to keep it clean. Yeah, Thank and you very it, much. And, it, and it's kind of juicy in in the like kind of the the pineapple orange uh, notes. Mm-hmm. So it still kind of plays with the pine, nice and friendly. Yeah, what hops are in this? Uh, it's a, a modest uh, Chinook bittering charge with heavy Idaho Seven and uh, Eldorado for both whirlpool and dry hopping. Okay. 
Yeah, damn good IPA. That's pretty yeah. tasty. Absolutely. What are the target IBUs on this? It's what down- are IBUs? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to shoot for like 40, 60. Okay. I, I haven't actually had it tested. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, just like right at the bottom of the range. Yeah. 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 I mean, th- this tastes like the best New England IPA I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's got all the Perfect. good, right. all those characteristics of it. Yeah. Without all the haze and the garbage floating in it. Yeah. You guys must make a hazy beer, though, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody. Uh, you have it on tap. Yeah. Oh, we do? Yeah. Okay. What's I just that? Drank it. What beer is that? Did you? Uh, denim trench coat. Okay. Uh, I saw one in real life. <laughs> you did. <that>. What? <laughs> Last time you were here, Oakland. Yeah. Sam was wearing it. Oh right, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> You probably didn't even have a beer plan. You just were like, "That's the name of the next beer." <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> you know how hard it is to name beers these days. I know. Unless yeah. you just give them a number. Right. I like your guys' style. You just like yeah. everyday life names your names your beers. Unless we don't have one in the pipeline, and then it's uh, rack the brains for a few hours. Right. Like uh, like your latest beer, you told me about Shimke hates tigers IPA. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's gonna mm-hmm. be that one's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's single hop Eldorado, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice and orangey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. tranquilized tigers. Tranquilized tigers. Yeah, yeah. 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 tranquilized so tigers. It's, be a, it's high alcohol beer. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be yeah. at the Haywards, the Bistro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. How about this? Uh, we're going to take a little break. I like and, that. Idea. Uh, when we come back, we're going to drink some more beer because we've got a couple more to try from you guys. We're going to get into the big ones here, JP. Okay. Like what? Uh, well, I know that we got a bourbon barrel aged uh, stout. I'm okay with that. Called Beast Fable. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm not going to tell any jokes about that one. The other name, I can't even really say it, Charlie. Mutt's Verandering? Yep. Is that it? Yeah, our collaborators named that one. Okay. See? I like how you put that. You're like, we didn't name that. It you, was not you, my fault. You thought you couldn't do it. No, it's a great name. And, and I, you tried it, and you <laughs> fucking did it, dude. See? God damn I'm it. I'm leaving right now. I'm, I'm proud of yourself. I'm going to do stand-up <laughs> <laughs> right now. I can do no. this. Uh, All right. <laughs> your friends will treat you a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get True. off the st- I liked it when you were funny. Yeah. <laughs> see? That's fine, though. Uh, I like sir, that this is my first time. Oh. I know. It was better when you weren't here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. Before the break, hey, Pico Brew. Uh, you yes. know, if you don't have a lot of room to brew, or you're just looking for a way to like just make it happen in one uh, perfect little box, a perfect little box, baby. Pico Brew, right? Absolutely. What do they have? They got like a, a bunch of stuff now. You, you can homebrew on the thing. You, you can, can homebrew. You can distill. distill. Uh, they have a modular system where you can do all grain brewing in machines, but the machines like stack. So you can do, oh. to, I think it's the Z, uh-huh. where you can do, you know, two and a half gallons or five oh. or seven and a half or even ten, and they're modular, so you can put them in the corner of a little brew pub or a little restaurant or whatever. They're kind of just trying to bring the accessibility yeah. to people wherever they don't have space. And, you know, working at More Beer, and we've heard it on the show before, too, from a lot of listeners in the forums and stuff like that, I don't have the room anymore, or I'm downgrading because, I'm you know, my wife is divorcing me yeah. for the handyman, Carlos, Juan Carlos specifically very handsome guy right. but um and I, I won't have to get rid of all my stuff yeah this is perfect Pico for brew. apartment brewers doc's like the perfect exa- doc's the example you just gave <laughs> pretty much <laughs> literally yeah. got a divorce <laughs> yeah and got, got a, got a brew, dramatic, dude. yeah absolutely like, couldn't fit <laughs> all of his because you know he had like the ultimate home brewery yeah i did. mean he still does just in a storage unit somewhere <laughs> that's true uh but didn't yeah. stop him from brewing absolutely not don't <laughs> let <laughs> it stop you from brewing don't <laughs> let a divorce <laughs> stop you from brewing. is that their latest tagline <laughs> be. pico be. brew because fuck divorce that's right <laughs> yeah just because your wife won't fuck you anymore doesn't mean you're br- you're f- uh, wait yeah There's, you were it, close. it's in there it's, it's in, in there. there right rewrite that one all right i'm gonna work on it right come now come back next week they're gonna love this read go to, pico, <laughs> go to picobrew.com and check it out you too can brew at home yeah alone it, it, Your support of the Brewing Network means everything to us. We couldn't produce shows without you. And we love giving you something extra for that support, like Brew Your Own Magazine. You already know it's a great brewing magazine full of recipes, equipment how-tos, discussions of beer styles, and brewing techniques. Whether you're new to brewing and just starting out or you're an old pro, you'll always learn something from the articles in Brew Your Own. Plus, there are amazing special issues like plans for building a brew. 10 system, 250 classic clone recipes, and the Home Brewer's Answer Book. Brew Your Own Magazine and BYO.com are awesome resources for any.
Bethany Brewer. Whether for yourself or as a gift, when you subscribe or resubscribe from the Brewing Network homepage, you directly support programs like this. Get a great magazine and support the Brewing Network. Subscribe to Brew Your Own right from the thebrewingnetwork.com. Are you looking for a simple brewing system that's great for all grain brewing, but everything on the market seems to be full of compromises? Blickman Engineering has the answer. The Blickman Brew Easy All Grain Brewing System. The Brew Easy is a complete system with easy upgrades and a beautiful compact design, perfect for any size brewing location. At its core, the Brew Easy is built on two gorgeous Blickman Boilermaker brew kettles, a high temperature March pump, and either a top tier gas burner or the new boil coil electric heater. The Brew Easy adapter lid allows the pots to stack on top of each other, forming an efficient, strong, and compact brewing setup that comes in 5, 10, and 20-gallon batch sizes. Upgrade your BrewEasy system with full automated control by adding a Blickman Tower of Power temp controller and make moving around easy with the Blickman Kettle Cart. The BrewEasy is modular. If you already own a Boilermaker kettle, you can build your BrewEasy by purchasing just the modules you need. The new BrewEasy all-grain brewing system. See it today at BlickmanEngineering.com and brew with Blickman quality on your new BrewEasy. This is Matt Reynoldson from Firestone Walker Brewing Company, and you're listening to The Session on the Brewing Network. All right, thanks for hanging out with us. We're here with Allegory Brewing, hanging out, drinking beer. Uh, Go to Beersmith.com, download your free 21-day trial of the best brewing software out there. Of course, you don't have to take my word for it, because it's a free trial. It works on your PC and your Mac and probably other things. I don't even know. The guy makes something for for everything. (laughs) uh, Not only does it do all the things you need it to do and more, but there's a recipe database containing over 700,000 recipes. Go to Beersmith.com. Get your free 21-day trial of Beersmith 3 right now. And thank Brad for being a sponsor of this program for so long. He's a good guy. Can't wait to see you out at HomebrewCon, Brad. That's the only time we get to hang out with Brad and run into him. All right. As I mentioned, we're hanging out with Kim Shimke's boyfriend. <laughs> My microphone's failing me again. Yeah. Is it mine? Is it yours? No, it, yours cuts in and out. Um, yeah, it's very weird. It happens to all of us when we get older, I hear. Cuts yeah. in and out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does kind of droop. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's listing to one side. <laughs> That's very I'm true. S- I'm just happy it works half the time. Right. Jesus Christ. One of the supports is off, <laughs> and uh, the rest are cracking. So there we go. Mm. Talk about allegories. I feel like i got to do some studio rebuilding. Yeah, well... It's, it's I, time to revamp. Nothing rebuilds better than fire. So yeah. mm. burn Thank the you. entire goddamn thing down. That's a good call. Then I can afford to rebuild it, actually. Right? Oh, I was going to ask you if... Said it. Yeah, I was, you're right. I can edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask if I can, you know, uh, furlough you for a month or two, JP. Sure. <laughs> Buy some uh, new microphone cables. No, I can't afford it. I think I have to furlough you for six months to afford one microphone cable. <laughs> uh, all right. No, we are hanging out with Allegory Brewing Company, and we're still tasting some beer here. Um, you guys like to source a lot of uh, local ingredients, right? Like, you guys are surrounded not just by wineries, which we've mentioned, and, of course, there's there's a lot of hops there, but uh, orchards. Uh, you guys get a lot of fruit grown in the, in the oh, valley, yeah, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we like to work with uh, Baird Family Orchards. Um, they make some killers. Or grow killer stone fruit. Okay. A um, little bit of that is actually in this beer uh, that we're going to try. What do we have here? Uh, Mutt's Verandering. Right. Uh, we brewed that with our friends up at ABV Public House for their anniversary, or uh, blended it. Okay. So it's a uh, a table beer that we would brewed in collaboration with Mecca Great Estate Malt out in Madras, Oregon, uh, aged in, or fermented in uh, a couple punchins that we picked uh, picked up locally. And then um, working with the ABV guys, we decided to get a bunch of grapefruit zest, added that to the punchins for a few weeks, and then blended in 25% of the uh, this peach beer that we have okay. in a uh, project tank sitting there hanging out. The, the peach is so bright and awesome in this yeah, beer. Yeah, I'm really excited for the uh, the peach beer itself. Mm-hmm. Literally just yeah. drank the wrong beer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God, I do not taste peach. I don't get any peach. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. It's, it's just, it's really bright. Yeah, um, it's fun. That, that grapefruit really pops out that peach character more than I thought 
it would initially when we started talking about the idea. Mm. Pop that peach, boy. Yeah, yeah. I would have thought the grapefruit would add like some bitterness. Right. But I don't really pick that up. I mean, maybe there's a little tinge of it like um, like in the grapefruit peel a little bit, but it's mostly just bright fruit. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um how did you put the grapefruit in? Like, what What was it you said? Oh, we have one of those uh, rotatoes that you can get on Amazon. What the hell's a rotato? That just cuts what? the, like, peels it? That's oh, yeah. They're, just that. Yeah. they're oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, like, so if there's any that. brewers, I was actually just talking with Shilpi today. Um, Shilpi? Like, <laughs> who? Shilpi from Logston Farmhouse Sales. Oh, He's, like, uh, asking about some, uh, sourcing some bitter orange peel on yeah, I don't want to go through cases of fruit. And I was like, dude, rotato, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe later, but yeah. Um, so it just, it literally just peels the grapefruit? It's this, yeah, corny plastic thing. And uh, right. I haven't broken it yet. I'm actually pretty surprised. How many have you done in a row? Like, how many grapefruits have you gone through? We've done, we did a case for this. Wow. A yes. case of grapefruit's a pretty good job on it. And, yeah, it is yeah. pretty, because you think that shit would, like, heat up and, and start to just fall apart. Because just consumer, it's yeah. not even like, we're not talking commercial grade anything here, right? No, I mean, it's as seen on TV, like, right. make your french fries. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's 110% plastic. Okay. <laughs> but it's still kicking ass. Yeah, so far. I love yeah, this. Uh, I'm probably going to eat my words next week when I go to... Yeah, um, we just jinxed you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically. Uh, so you already had the peach beer in in barrels? Uh, in in a stainless tank, actually. Okay. Yeah, I have an old enclosed 14-barrel uh, dairy tank uh, okay. that I was able to load 1,100 pounds of halved, quartered, however they wanted to let go of their pits, uh, peaches from Baird. I see. And then what was the other beer? It was another full yeah. beer? Or you just okay. Yeah, that was another full beer. It was a, a collaboration I'd done with Mechagrade. Got um, it. Okay. It was just a nice little table beer with Brett that hadn't gotten around to packaging yet. And I was like, no, this is the one. And yeah. went for it. No, that's a good blend right there. Thank you. Yeah. You guys should be known for your peach-flavored beers right now. <laughs> <laughs> At least what you brought us, because it, it's just so, like, it's so... I don't know. I don't know what else to say, pe- but like peach beer before, like it, bright and some of present. My favorites. Okay, yeah, it's really a great flavor for beer. I think. Yeah, I mean, it can be subtle and bright at the same time, and I think that's kind of what you do. Like, it doesn't really taste like a fruit beer to me, mm-hmm. right? You know, like the old like fucking apricot yeah, yeah, ale yeah, and right. like shit like that. Um, it doesn't taste like a fruity beer, but it's just so bright. I love it. Yeah, we also work with. Uh, there's another local company, Hersberry Farm. We've gotten cranberries from them. Uh, kiwi berries, uh, which hmm. we were just kind of presented one day, and I ate one, and I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, what's uh, a kiwi berry? They're they're like these little miniature kiwis. You okay. know, maybe hmm. they look like a they look like a watermelon that's the size of an olive. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're and pretty they, wild. And then when you go into them, it's a kiwi, but there's no fuzz. Interesting. And do you eat it whole, or do you yeah. still have to take the skin? And no, you just eat, eat it whole. It. Interesting. Yeah. So I, they were like, "Do you guys want to make some?" beer out of this and i was like i don't know uh how much is it and <laughs> yeah they're like, how many how many pounds do you want and i was like well i'm gonna need a few few hundred pounds of this and oh yeah no problem cool wow so that, that was a really fun one they just had a bunch of it <laughs> what do they do with it they're pretty they're major pretty big, yeah. player we're i show up to the warehouse and they have to like find the tiny little toe that just is labeled beer guy yeah um and they bring it out to us and it's like yeah 200 to 500 pounds each time and it's like cool costco doesn't want this wow oh that's perfect yeah yeah now how do you put that how do you have to process that fruit i end up like hand macerating them okay and uh into buckets and then chucking them into tanks and putting beer on it got it yeah have you tried the finished beer yet? You, uh, you yeah, we it. had one last year. I, I haven't um, finished this year's okay. uh, vintage of it. It's still sitting in a tank. Got it. Been collecting old tanks whenever they uh, kind of pop up. Okay. Not, not something you'd use in, in standard production, but if it's a, a stainless vessel that is easily cleanable and can hold fruit. Yeah. And the right price. They're great to pick up. Nice. <laughs> so it, that's how you do your fruit beers in general, as opposed to putting fruit in a barrel? Oh, we put fruit anywhere. You do? Okay. Yep. You guys make a lot of different fruit beers then, or blends? or we, We've been trying to, yeah. I mean, again, being you know, we started producing in um, mid-August of 17, mm-hmm. and so we were kind of scrambling to get uh, uh, the peach beer before this one. 
into tank. We grabbed some grapes that we could get a hold of, some kiwi berries, some cranberries, and then that was kind of it for the season. So okay. last year was really our first full year of intentionally grabbing a bunch of fruit. Okay. Grabbed a bunch of cherries from a local orchard that didn't actually want to pick them. So spent a couple days up there and great. Yeah, all over the place. There's that's a lot of free ingredients for That's you. That's a lot guys. of fruit, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as long as labor doesn't count, we're we're totally young. Sure, sure. Well, and that's part of your region. Like that's kind of why I brought it up too, that you guys are trying to use things that are local to you and it's not just it's not just wine and hops. Yeah. But you guys I did read in my notes that you do some like beer wine hybrids. Yeah, we had one at Spring Brews uh, on Saturday. Oh, you did? Yeah. Tell me about that. What does a beer wine hybrid look like? Uh, it's got a lot of grapes in it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this one, uh, we use some Viognier grapes from Anime, um locally and co-fermented a uh, farmhouse ale on them that was had a heavy Nelson Sauvin Whirlpool charge. And then after it co-fermented on the grapes for a couple months, then we'd bring it back over to a clean tank and then dry hop it again with Nelson Sauvin. Okay. It's Play- called The Enemy of My Enemy. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you're doing fine. Thanks, Thanks man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Nelson Sauvin, the perfect uh, hop for for a oh, grape. And, yeah, we're just playing on that concept of like everyone says, oh, the grape hop. You know? Yeah, and, yeah. So, hmm. is there are there any laws about grapes and and beer? You know, what I'm getting at like, does it have to be a certain percent? Forty Forty nine. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So forty nine percent must be barley. No, fifty one has to be barley. barley. So, so it cannot be more than forty nine percent grapes. Yeah. I see. Okay. See, I think that's a little bit stupid. Like, <laughs> I think it's a lot yeah. stupid. <laughs> I mean, why? Not? Like, who gives a shit? Yeah. You yeah. I, I. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, just if you want to clarify specifically, it's going to cost you money, I guess. How much? How? What percent was grapes when you guys do this? I don't remember off the top of my head. It was a lot. But no more we, than 49%. Right, exactly. 5 percent Got it, got it, got it. For, yeah, for we the, brought in a, a ton of Viognier grapes. Um, and Like a literal ton? Yeah, and stopped putting them in the tank when the tank was full enough to worry about fitting beer in there. Okay. So, I mean, like you know, uh, to me. filled, <laughs> yeah, filled up the cone. And then it was just going to be hard to throw them in the man way. So yeah. yeah. We do. Stop there. I don't think I've had a beer like that. What is it? What is it like? I mean, uh, uh, you don't remember tasting it on Saturday? <laughs> I don't. Oh, did I, I taste tasted it? tasted it, yeah. A few times. You go, yeah, what's that other one you have? <laughs> Oh, oh. That's it just, you know what it tasted like? No, 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 it tasted no. like cold. No, no, I did at taste that point it. in the day. But I you. would not. It didn't taste. Okay. I just thought it was a mixed fermented beer. Yeah. Like, uh, I didn't think it was very, like, grapey or whiny. The Viennier grape um, I've really enjoyed uh, brewing with because it's, you know, not as, quote, grapey. It's um, okay. just really nice and light and fruity. Got it. It's really fun to, like, work with our local wineries and our, our vineyards because, it's like, that's a cold climate Viognier, so it is, like, acid a little, a little more pronounced, um, hmm. not as sweet. Uh, so it's it's really fun to, like, talk and work with those guys okay. um, on what we want to do. Um, yeah. Uh, well, then I remember it being good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I don't re- yeah. The reason I'm saying that, too, is I don't remember it being, like, particularly, like, I would have gone, oh, you put a bunch of grapes wasn't in there. Right. obvious. But I, th- yeah. I mean, I think that's kind of what you want. Yeah. You want to use these ingredients as a secondary, um, you know, sort of, correct me if I'm wrong, but just to, to not to stand out on its own, like, oh, this is clearly grapes with beer. It's still beer. It's still beer. Yeah. I actually want bull. I, I liked that, but I kind of want one, if you're going to go... Forty nine percent. Yeah, I would love to try one where it is. A I don't really, even think we're a lot we like wine. Close to forty nine. Yeah. Okay, it, it was big, but not. Have you guys ever made idea. one where where a wine drinker might go? Oh, this is wonderful. I like this wine. <laughs> I like, will not actually want to speak to your manager after drinking. It. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like th- th- maybe it was more on the wine side than the beer side. Have you guys ever made one like that? I mean, the the thing that we do most of the time with our wine. Our wine beer hybrids are that a, a lot of people don't do because we're lucky enough to be where we're at is we do whole grapes like, you know, like they are destemmed and okay. um, slightly crushed, but we don't get juice like you know, we I actually see. do put it on on whole fruit. Um, so that we, would make a difference. Yeah. I mean, you're just you're just not pulling as much, um, but we're uh, 
We've done a few, but I would still say all of our beers are still beers. All the free time was um, pretty kind of wine forward. That was with that uh, was with Pinot grapes. Okay, a lot of Pinot grapes, and, uh, and that was pretty juicy Pinot grapes, and also freshly done Pinot barrels too. Yeah. So yeah. Do you get much color from the grapes that way? Mm. The Pinot, mm. hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was a pretty beer. Because it's only on the grapes in a few weeks, right? Or are you letting no, it sit No, yeah, we, we let that sit um, maybe a couple months. And I'm still I, – I don't have a background in wine. Uh, I don't drink a ton of wine. I enjoy it when I do. Usually need a, a, a wine Sherpa to kind of lead me in the right direction of what's yeah. delicious. It's – really intimidating compared to beer selections at luckily least those guys like me. beer it is yeah true. exactly uh we have a few quite a few friends around that'll show us the right things to open up um so but yeah we- I, I haven't really experimented too much or have too much knowledge in terms of skin contact time for the desired results hmm. for tannins and shit like yeah, that yeah what, what was that color you were saying is really pretty beer what was the color of it oh man it was like a a bright Deep crimson. Okay. Oh, I'd go garnet. Oh, okay, there you go. What did, what, what did you say? Garnet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's trying to impress Shimki over there yeah. with his color knowledge. Right. She doesn't even know. She doesn't even listen. She stopped listening to him an hour That's ago. That's a tour anyway. he doesn't buy me. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's what wow. she's doing. You know garnet, David. Classic. Oh, you picked the wrong wow. word. You know Classic Shimki. Huh? Hey, some, <laughs> some feminist Shimki is. Yeah. That's oh. why he didn't say Ruby. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Mail buy me jewelry. <laughs> how long? How long you two been dating now? Seven months. Seven months. <laughs> Fucking guys always keep their mouth shut for that question. You ever right. notice that? We're idiots. Well, because microphone <laughs> over to Kim. The real answer too long. Because he easily would have been like, I don't know, like three months. Like he never. <laughs> <He's half weak. laughs> right. Are we officially dating? <laughs> Well, like, actually, we had that conversation? actually, Justin, I don't respond to that question. I only respond to how long have you been complete? <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, you do read a lot about modern relationships, don't you, JP? <laughs> no, I'm just really smart about it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm just, I'm <laughs> if you say so. Yeah. Can I sign okay. up for your newsletter? Yes, actually you can. Yeah. Five brilliant hacks <laughs> to gaslight women. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so you haven't bought her jewelry yet. <laughs> uh, That's all right. Was that... <laughs> Have you bought me dinner yet? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Good job making her pay. Yeah. <laughs> We do too. It's all that, <laughs> yeah, it's all that brewing network, well, thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Shinky, dinner's on you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Don't check your expense reports. <laughs> They're like, Kim's the one with the real job. So. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Even Bevo knows that. <laughs> I have a real job too. <laughs> you do? She yeah. just doesn't make what she's worth. I own a company. True. <laughs> I own a company. That's right. You are a company owner now. Look at me. I own a company. All right, uh, last beer in our glass, the Beast Fable. Let's start with the name. Where's this from? Don't tell me you saw something in a garage again. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's why we're just looking at, uh, do we tell this story? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. legal in 47 states. Um, uh, this actually is one of the few from the beginning of the brewery, things that are related to allegories. That, okay. So... We we have a list of beers that for maybe ones we do like yearly um, or that will be packaged that we like keep to the side. Hmm. And then if the beer meets to you know that level, then we bring it out and this beer happened to be there. So, okay. But so, from the very beginning, I always thought it would be like a big like bourbon barrel aged stout. So. so it is a bourbon barrel aged stout. Yeah, Heaven Hills Barrels. Oh, okay, nice. Mm-hmm. What else can you tell us about it? It's delicious. <laughs> How long was it in those barrels? Uh, only six, eight months. Mm. Uh, pretty short turn, but um, it's tasting right and it's yeah. the right season. So, yeah, a lot of like sweet vanilla in there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's not the- as like huge on the body as a lot of them are, but it. No, I agree. I was pleasant. Like I was kind of worried going uh, force carbonating it. I was worried I was getting lose a little bit of body and actually it seemed to have gone the other way i was worried it was going to seem too thin hmm. but no i don't think so there's still like a little sweetness like left on the lips afterward too mm-hmm. um also not too much bourbon which is a turn off for me uh i don't think it's it's not hot for sure mm-hmm. um i think the bourbon comes through more just in like vanilla oak notes yeah it's almost like if you could get 
bourbon essence. Yeah. Because I do get bourbon, but like you said, it's not super hot. It's not an overwhelming bourbon. Maybe on the, a little bit on the end, but I don't know. I like that. Maybe so I'm fun yeah. looking for it in a positive note versus you're going, I, I'm I don't glad want, it's yeah. not there this much. Yeah, I want yeah. bourbon essence. That's my right. jam. Yeah. And I'm glad you gave, I'm glad <laughs> you gave me that term. <laughs> Their new album's coming up, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of goes back to we like to play with all the fun um, kind of kind of beer trends going on right now, but it's try to keep a delicate hand in it mm. so that it's a generally well-balanced beer, even if it's something kind of wacky. Yeah. Or uh, in this case, you know, quote extreme or... Sure. I drink a or whatever. Yeah. Like Dave Marley off can drink a 16-ounce can while mowing his lawn at 10 p.m. That was, yeah. that was, I don't, I don't that's think that should be your judge. That was an amazing... Yeah. He, he yeah. texted me a picture of him with his headlights on and on his riding lawnmower and, and uh, a can of this. And I was like... Yeah. The only thing that would make you more Oregonian is if it was raining. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're assuming Guaranteed. he was on his lawn. Guaranteed. He was going to work. He was wearing open shoes yeah. Yeah. while mowing his lawn. Yeah, not his lawn. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The park down the street. <laughs> <laughs> He's a community servant. He, yeah. <laughs> he is amazing, but he should not be your judge about drinkability. <laughs> Dave can do it. Yeah. What what percent is this beer? What's the ABV it's here? It's ten three. Okay, um, man, it's just right. I like it at ten three. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, it, it does have a fair amount of drinkability, mm-hmm. which is <laughs> which is kind of dangerous. A completely <laughs> insane thing to say about a beer like this. You have a lawn now, and you're gonna go. Do you I don't feel have like a lawn. You can go mow it. No, oh, you I don't. No. Oh, your house. Your new house doesn't have a lawn. No, it's uh like tan bark. You know, you can go uh, rake the bark. Uh, There's grass yeah, across the street, park, yeah. but I have a park across the street. Yeah. So Ooh, I can go. Except it's not hands free if you're raking. So how do you uh, uh, how do you I drink while you rake your bark? Very careful. Uh, actually, one of those hats. I shove. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, the I do. Straw, the straw hat. I have one of those, but really, I just sh- shove the handle of the rake up my butt. <laughs> oh yeah, and so walk, like, as I walk, walk around. Just walk. <laughs> yeah, very gingerly. I mean, to each his own. Whatever. Oh, yeah. See, that's the Tinder photo that Shinky can get into. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. If you want to show that you got a wild side, forget this tiger thing. <laughs> shove a rake watch up your me, ass. <laughs> yeah. Watch me rake. No hands. I also oh. like innovation. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Yeah. I know. He's like, my dude. Look at him innovate. <laughs> my, guy. Yeah. my guy. My her, man's my man's nose. Her friends are like, he has a rake shoved up his ass. Yeah. And Shimki's like, that's fucking creative. No, I can't get over there fast enough. He's a thinker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but check out my yard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great my man, Halloween costume too. <laughs> my man laughing. Does she know. Yeah. It's like a she Japanese knows. garden in there. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's another great idea. Uh, yeah. My prostate is very zen. Japanese garden, no hands while drinking. That sort of defeats the purpose, but I'm with you on that. That's exactly the type of Japanese gardening I would be doing. God, the mental images are so amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, guys, these are great beers. Thanks for thanks for bringing them yeah, in absolutely. here. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you. What's next for you guys? You got a big expansion coming, like everybody else does? You're just gonna kind of. I think we're just gonna jump straight to like the I don't know. 200 barrel brewery? No, I'm just kidding. You should jump straight to getting bought out for a billion dollars. Yeah, seven barrel getting bought out. That's the next (laughs) big thing. Stranger things have happened. Uh, Touche. How cool would that be? That'd be the next, that'd be a great new story. Like, yeah. We would all just go, like, those idiots at Allegory? <laughs> Remember that? A fucking billion dollars for their seven-barrel system? Oh, that'd be great. Like, what happened to Shimki? <laughs> yeah. She's like, I still haven't gotten any fucking jewelry. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've moved on to the rate guy. <laughs> the innovative rate guy. Uh, I have a name. Yeah. By the way, you should and be careful to enunciate when you say who you've moved on to. <laughs> the rate yeah, guy. Yeah, the rate guy. <laughs> just be careful. That's all. But it would probably be more accurate. <laughs> <laughs> for Shimke or in general? For in general. Okay. Yeah. Guys on Tinder. Yeah, yeah, right. Good point. Pound right. me too. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> I could just accuse the entire Tinder community of rape. But. It's not the worst thing. We've Is it done. a community? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to hang out a little bit? Hell yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. I think you had another beer we could try too, right? Yeah, yeah. We brought the, uh, the ultimate of ultimate collabs. Uh, our okay. friend Phil over at Almanac. Invited a bunch of us over for uh, a big brew on uh, SF Beer Week. Okay. So. Excellent. 
Well, let's take a little break and come back and try that. Awesome. All right. You are listening to the session. Uh, before we go, don't forget about Great Fermentations. You go to greatfermentations.com, and they now offer offer specialized grain ordering. You can order in increments of less than a pound. Uh, perfect for specialty malts. And um, I'm doing like too many things at once here. Forgive me. Um, you can combine or keep grain separate. You can even tell them to crush the grain if you want. Check them out at greatfermentations.com. As always, Great Fermentations provides top-notch customer service and same-day shipping on so many items. Just go check them out at greatfermentations.com. It's the session. We will be right back. Since 1979, Williams Brewing has offered the finest equipment and freshest ingredients and the best customer service in the business. Check out their brand new patent-pending mash and boil 110-volt electric mashing and boiling unit. This compact all-stainless unit lets you mash, sparge, and boil just about anywhere that has a 110-volt plug. Double wall construction adds to efficiency and safety, and a precise thermostat keeps temperatures where you want them. Unlike insulated buckets and converted coolers, multiple temperature rest mashing is easy to do all for under 300 bucks they also feature the mark ii work pump a magnetic drive high temperature pump that does the work of pumps that cost twice as much as well as exclusive brewers edge regulators and quality keg king kegs and disconnects check them out today at williamsbrewing.com to bruise their vast selection Hey, motherfuckers, this is Doug from fucking Society. You're listening to the session on the fucking Bruin Network. Fuck you. All right. Welcome back. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. Before we get to the next beer tasting, 2-1-A, our good friends, has brought back Toaster Pastry. We were letting you know last week, Toaster Pastry is back. In celebration of the 10th anniversary of the 2NA Insurrection Series beers, they have revived three crowd favorites to their 2019 lineup. Toaster Pastry, uh, Pastry India Red, Hop Crisis Imperial IPA, and Monk's Blood Belgian Style Strong Dark Ale. Toaster Pastry was the first beer that they've brewed out of their San Leandro place, so uh, they brought it back after winning an award, by the way, at the GABF for that first year that they did it. Hell yeah. Um, and now it's back. Sorry, JP. That's all right. It's delicious, delicious beer. 7.6% ABV and 74 IBUs, and it's still, I just had it the other day. It doesn't taste uh, as big as it sounds. <laughs> yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> Uh, she never said that to me. Uh, Toaster Pastry. Did. It's available in stores now. Limited release, so grab it when you can. Uh, Hop Crisis is coming out in June, and then Monk's Blood at the end of the year. All right. Well, we got a couple things to finish up. We still got the Allegory Boys in studio with us. We're going to taste one of their beers while we wrap up a little bit. Fucking thing. You all right? It's glitching out on you, huh? I think I'm glitching out. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to me, too. I'm about to glitch out. It's weird. <clears throat> Did I glitch out last time you were in the studio, Charlie? Is it your fucking fault? Oh, probably. It's definitely not Charlie's <laughs> fault. It happens. It just happens. <laughs> it happens, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we got to wrap up our, our Twitter game. Uh, Beardy, of course, did the Twitter game tonight. It was very, um, it was very... It happened. Uh, awesome. Amazing. It was awesome. Well, I, no, I was coming up, no th- those weren't the words, although those are fine, too. Uh, <laughs> soft, maybe it was one okay. of the... Uh, um, kind. I don't know. Uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, um, <clears throat> I just want to hear about this last beer. It's in our glass from, from Allegory, which has one of the Actually, co- coolest uh, Almanac. labels. Oh, it's an Almanac beer. Yeah, yeah. You we guys were just a part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got uh, it. Yeah, so... Um, Phil Emerson over at Almanac and the the great team over there uh, hosted a bunch of shenanigans during uh, SF Beer Week. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we spent a couple days over there filling their new 100-barrel conical fooder from Fooder Crafters, and uh, we all decided to put a lager in it Okay, uh, with a homebrew selection of grains. Uh, Not a really complicated... Gris, but uh, we wanted to represent ingredients from the regions where everyone came from. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we had uh, Cerebral, Modern Times, Us, Schilling, Our Mutual Friend, Good Beer Co., and Fremont. Wow. All uh, hanging around one little brew deck drinking beer. Yeah, what'd you really do? You just hang out drinking beer, right? Yeah, and talk about beer. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't yeah. forget that. Yeah, well, that's where all the great some, ideas are developed. While some poor asshole has to do the brewing that day, right? <laughs> no, they were having fun too. Okay, that's yeah, good. It's teamwork. Yeah. It was also on me sandwiches the first day. Oh, that's good. On, uh, oh, what was it called? Uh, shit Your Pants Pizza the shit second day. Pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty good. Yeah, it was good Shit Your Pants Pizza. Wow. Yeah. Don't get behind it that. It was a two-day process? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, a couple batches into this thing. We ended up putting just shy of 50 barrels into it. Wow. And, uh, yeah, we were using uh, some Mecca Grade malt from Oregon, Colorado malt, Colorado hops, uh, Skagit Valley um malt from washington and admiral malt oh yeah so from right here it's a little little smattering it was great it's a good beer it's really nice yeah it's pretty fun also dry yeah kind of almost white grapey mm. mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. i agree with you jp thank you Justin. you're on it tonight thanks baby only because i agree with you i guess like, yeah. you're probably always on it i just disagree yeah, that's probably true <laughs> what's he on tonight <laughs> yeah something I don't know. it's on the crosley train getting it right <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that train hasn't left the station. Right. That's the methadone train? The train's been gone for a while. Not yet, Beardy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not till I'm like 50-ish. Yeah. I'm gonna get Round on. down to 43? <laughs> yeah, we're going to get on the methadone train. Uh, all right, Beardy. This has Sabro in it also. Oh, just it does? Just for reference, oh. yeah. Sabro and cashmere. Sorry, I forgot to mention that part. Okay. Well, it's got a little peach flavor to it also. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, for sure. The peach, white, grapey kind of thing. Yeah. It's you are going in your man. peach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's good. Get What's you, the ABV on this? Get your house flavor. So I know. I, I need to know in order for me to like it or not. <laughs> it's got a great 5. label. 8. I love it. Man, I don't high. love it. I too like high. it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that Mexican lager better. We should have that right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's another can of it, I think, for you. Maybe. Uh, yes, yeah. there is. I mean, no, it's, there's not. I've no, been yeah, here this no. whole time. Yeah. Leave it to Warren to tell me I can have something and steal it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then try to give it back to you and you not want it. And then you stole it again. All right, Beardy, what was We're our Twitter better. game today? Uh, it was uh, really seeking gay. ideas <laughs> seeking ideas for a gift basket for Tasty since we want to let him know we were thinking about him. Yeah, did I miss that? I missed that. Yeah. Right. yeah, wasn't a gift, but just a gift. Well, just a gift, right? Because something gift to put in the basket. Could be the basket. Thing, yeah. Wow, the mini right. muffin basket. Aren't you glad I was late? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm just picturing us bringing in a fucking basket of any kind <laughs> to somebody from the Brug Network. The only but, basket uh, he would want is going to have a big rake and a dildo. Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, well, how do you think people did before you tell us? Uh, uh, there was quite a few responses. I actually had to whittle it down. Okay. So uh, I picked generally four. what happens. Yeah. yeah, I picked four that I think are, are worthy-ish. I gotta admit, I like that four. Four is a good, solid number, JP. I, I can I can give you four. <laughs> I can I can give you one. I can just pick the goddamn thing. I <laughs> Sometimes I say that to you, and then you get mad. I go you know, here. You go. Pick I have it. been known to yell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, oh God. What size is this? Well, font? let me ask you. Are, are they all? Are they very serious? Uh, well, Kim, what so, size is Warren's font over there? I mean, I could have I the people like on the 40. couch behind uh, read it for us. Warren's on the Reader's Digest version of this fucking Twitter game. <laughs> <laughs> I like. My, I'm here reading my stories. <laughs> it's actually. I just got this laptop. There's a Braille feature on the screen, so I can actually just rub my hand wow. over the screen. It's a slap yeah. top. That's slap top. So <laughs> no. well, See, that's a joke. That's a, it is a joke. Did you right. write that? No. Yeah, <laughs> I just made time. it. Well, I mean, he said it. Hey, yeah. you got the first good one tonight. It's observational humor. Yeah. Is that a roast or is that observational? <laughs> humor? It's observational humor. Okay, mm. I like it. All right, so that's what you did. Observational humor, Justin. Yeah. I'm observing Thank this you. bit going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Patty says a big pile of low hug cookies. Low hug mm-hmm. cookies. Okay. Uh, Fuck, it's a low hug cookie. Well, you a know, Tasty always gets a low hug. No, yeah, but what's a low hug cookie? I don't know. No. It's just you know, ask you it's trying Twitter. to be just just trying to be creative. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let them play. So now I'm now I'm trying to roast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool your jet. Should yeah. go back to observational. That's right. I got a low <laughs> hug cookie, two inches uh, below my belly button. <laughs> Chris says, uh, side boob shaped cookies with his iconic character on it to help him with his safe, shameless self promotion. That's not bad. That's not bad. In a hospital, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wonder if the, the if, I wonder if already by now the nurses are like, oh yeah, those must be for Tasty. <laughs> Do you think they're calling him Tasty in a hospital? <laughs> I hope so. Do you think he went in? He was like. 
I mean, my name's Mike, but people call me Tasty. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm man, six I feet away, but I can still read his screen. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. I really appreciate Songful Chris terribly misspelling caricature. Yeah. <laughs> if only computers and phones had like a like a function to mm-hmm. fix your spelling for you automatically. <laughs> yeah, he said he's drunk. That worked. Tight. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's interested in peeing the longest that's ever happened on the session. So, oh, yeah. he wants to do the long pee. <laughs> yeah. Is he holding it in? He's holding it. <laughs> he, he spelt it. It's Tur tur. Tur, tur. Yeah. Look, the guy's from Oregon. <laughs> you know, he's oh, not he's, very. No, no, no. He, he's he's coasting it right now. Yeah. He's, he's coasty. It's true. Uh, then uh, Mikhail says, "Stickers of yourselves, Gorbachev." Which I thought was pretty. Stickers good. of ourselves. <laughs> With he a would big wine stain on your forehead. I feel like that would be funny for us. He would hate it. Uh, but I'm writing it down. Okay. Yeah. And then he would. He'd be like, well, "Yours looks like shit compared to mine." <laughs> And then lastly, yeah. Tyler says, easy, a whole lot of the cousin. Of course, it would also come with papers with each person's face on it. Oh, that kind way of a he, hybrid. Yeah, that way he knows who's thinking of them. Kind of a hybrid of the sticker idea, but mm-hmm. more tailored to Tasty if you think about it. Something he would actually enjoy and have to look at us. I think that's the clear winner, don't you, Beardy? I like that one the best. Yeah, yeah. it's like then we get to show him us and, and he gets to burn us down. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Like he can choose. He'd be like, I've, "I'm actually, I'm all out of, I'm all out of Crosley papers. I burnt them all. <laughs> I, I, right. I smoked them first. I'd Fuck be, that guy." I'd be curious on the order. Would he smoke who he liked first, or would he save them for the end? Right. Is he? Yeah. yeah. His least favorite, or <laughs> or his most favorite first? Mm-hmm. I don't think he's very sentimental about stuff like that. Yeah, maybe not. Does, do you strike? T- does Tasty strike you as a sentimental boy? Actually, he is. Yeah. Does Tasty strike you as having a favorite person in this room? <laughs> no. well, like, that's that, more that's of what I different. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, no, Tasty's a sentimental guy. Uh, he he won't. He doesn't want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to go down that road. No. But how many times has have I made that guy cry right here well, that's in true. this talking studio? Talking about dogs, right? Oh, you know, dog yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, yeah. no, true. he's a sentimental guy. Uh, so. All right, that's our winner. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, rolling papers with our faces on them. Exactly. Mm. Do Kinkos in California do that yet? I'm sure they can. Sure. They will now. If not, we should start a new business, Shimki. Me, you, and Dave. <laughs> Why him? I'm just. Because he's right there. Because he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's here. He, he seems, loves rolling papers. Yeah, and he seems successful. Yeah. He's started a couple things already. I mean, but he started a brewery, which wasn't super yeah. smart. So I don't know if I'm going to go with that. Also started dating Kim. <laughs> Honestly, that's a fair point. Well, hey, you can buy keeper. You can buy custom rolling papers, but as far as I know, you can't print on the paper. Well, then what's custom about them? The, the, Have uh, you looked at Etsy? Yeah. The fold, the container that it's in, right? The uh, paper uh, packet. Right? I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But that'd be dope, dude. That would be dope. Seven months, though, huh, guys? Dave, is she the one? What do you think? Oh, here? God. It's like, Ooh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we need an answer. Right. Oh, my God. Please Yay. exit immediately. I mean, because yes. it damn. takes so long to make a beer for the wedding, See? Uh, depending mm-hmm. on what they want. Charlie's you know? got a plan. Yeah. That's like a 13-year process. Have a little you respect. Know? Yeah. You heard of Ultra Lambic? <laughs> 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 I mean, then what about babies? Like, Charlie has to plan for that, too. You guys. Right. I mean, you you're, got, the worst. you're a little older than I am, so... <laughs> Think think about this. No, Dave. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't let his face fool you. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear Shimki's clock ticking from here, though. So. I know, right? It's. I can hear Shimki cringing from here. <laughs> I feel like we're watching the last half of Peter Pan right Exactly, now. right. Is Captain Hook around? I mean, this is uncomfortable. Like I think Rocco? looking back at yeah. the, uh, <clears throat> the tiger photos where I actually used to date those kinds of guys is way more of a cringe thing happening right now. Yeah. Oh, looking right back, now we're worse agreed. than Tiger this Boys? Worse. Yeah. Uh, Fuck yeah, dude. We and we it. all have to be honest. We all knew that this was going to be the show. Oh, right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. We're going to look back at this. I should have warned you. From our respective uh, places after we no longer speak tonight. <laughs> mm. Oh, that, yeah, right, because we're, gonna... we're crashing at Shimkey's. <laughs> oh. oh, 
Oh. We might be crashing at the airport or on Justin's couch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, you guys haven't That's said anything, it's, uh, so we can't crash at Shimkey's tonight, yeah, right? Which was the plan. Or uh, oh, we after could end dinner, up, we right. could end up playing this at the wedding. You don't know. <laughs> like, that could happen. Yeah. yeah. Instead of music, we could dance to the session. <laughs> <laughs> Millennials don't get married. Oh, is that what it is? It's I so got married. What do they do? They coexist. It's not really. <laughs> they, they yeah. We have legal paperwork. I mean, it actually makes sense. You two don't even live in the same fucking state. It's perfect. <laughs> it is it's, perfect it's, for it's you. It's the ideal Kim. relationship. Yeah. I mean, you're not yeah, wrong. You sort of keep want to. Beer. <laughs> How often do you guys talk on the phone? Not text. Talk on the phone with your long distance relationship. I'd say on average five days a week. Five days a week. Five so you, days you, a week. Oh. You take I'll weekends talk. off? Yeah. Both, uh, <laughs> doing yeah. Else? Yeah. What's a weekend? Uh-huh. <laughs> Just during business hours. Yeah. But you text every day and all day. And how often do you visit each other? Like, long distance is kind of difficult. How often do you see each yeah, other? It's not too bad. Southwest is cheap. That's true. Um, like, yeah. Once a month. He uses his points, so... You know. <laughs> it's like, whatever actually, points I get left. I, I yeah, CBC has like, taken a lot, by the way. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, Kim, I'll see you in November. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta go to CBC. No, actually, it's great, because one of my good friends moved to Joshua Tree, and my parents moved to Phoenix, so it's a seasonal relationship. So I'm with Dave in the spring and summer, I and see. then I'm with my parents and my friends <laughs> in the fall and winter. Wow, this it's is so ideal. shimky. <laughs> That's so un industry, though. You're living my best life. Yeah. It's very bohemian. It's, mm. If millennials read, I would need a book because I, there's a lot of rules. <laughs> that Kim is teaching you? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah it's just a lot of yeah. We know this about her. This is a great test for you two, having to share a mic tonight. That's true. You guys have done it very well. It's pretty cute. Uh, yeah. In all seriousness, uh, uh, people have to share mics semi-often because I'm an idiot and my studio breaks all the time. Yeah. You two are doing very well. <laughs> It's almost Thank like you, you like yeah. each other. I mean, Kim's in charge, but oh, it's true. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. That's why Dave's doing so well. Yeah, Dave, right. Dave never takes the mic. Kim <laughs> right. hands it to him. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. I kind of feel like Charlie's in charge of the brewery, too. Dave, you seem like you're a very relaxed guy. <laughs> did you just say Charles in charge? Charles yeah. in charge. Yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> of our beer and our wine? In our lives. Yeah. <laughs> Too many things going on. I just try to be the eye of the hurricane. Just I mean, <laughs> well, you're still, you're still running the bottle shop, too, right? Like, you got that yeah. business to run. You got the brewery to run. Yeah. Okay. But you do, like, sales and, I mean, Charlie does all the brewing, right? But you got to do everything else at the brewery still. Yeah, we're a, we're what you would call a tight crew. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, dynamic crew. Duo. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and dynamic meaning like mm, we do all of the things. Yeah. Um, uh, by yeah. the way, Charlie's also going to write your wedding vows because he's clearly better at it. Oh, I'm going to get ordained. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That is Unless the, you want to do it, the, Justin. I mean, that's totally fine with me. Oh, no, or actually, JP might be more fun. <laughs> I feel I'll do whatever like, you want. Dynamic trio. Ooh. We're gonna we'll, we're gonna tag team that shit. Yeah. Oh, dude! You know what we should do is we should alternate every word. <laughs> mm. I mean, I, at this point, now, just yeah. from Pronounce. tonight, love. Come JP's on, he's got to be the best man for the best man speech. Hell yeah, yeah. So that's on, right. Yeah. yeah, he writes jokes. Are they jokes? Give him your start again. Bring your rake. Well, my, the joke that give I give me your joke. Yeah, here right. we go. Um, y'all ever get irrationally angry? Like I just want to go on record as saying she always a fucking terrible steps idea. over my punchline. Always, saving, always. Stop it. Yeah, I quit always. with you. Saving you. <laughs> okay, I'm let's fine. talk about let's it at the go. same time. Done. How are numbers? God damn. Have you met a wet blanket called Bevo? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> How are you? Uh, <laughs> Uh, Bevo is allowed to do whatever she wants for a couple weeks. I yelled at her. Yeah, because so. you yelled at me unnecessarily. She gets to do whatever she wants for a wait, couple Wait, wait, wait. Is that is it retroactive? Uh, oh, no. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm not that. Ask me again in a month. I'm not that far along in my therapy. Oh, God. Okay. All I right. did get fired by one of my therapists this week, though. You got fired by, <laughs> one, by, your, wait, by one of your by team? By one of them? One yeah, of, someone you on your team, team quit? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, you have a team. network of therapists. I have a fucking team. I, I got fired. Is this going to end up like three men and a baby where you have like seven days? Dads, <laughs> yeah, it's, baby? it's good. I think so. I don't know. I think it was. Uh, what? Yeah, I got made fired. A break what causes a therapist? Because your growth. 
You uh, move out? The therapists are <laughs> sneaky tumor. about firing you, but I, I know what they're doing. Oh, shit. Why? Oh, 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 here I we think go. You wait another yeah, I, th- for this. I think your team needs to grow. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. I think that yeah. your team needs to do the growing, not you. I know what you're up to. One session and they're on the couch, yeah. actually. <laughs> these these yeah. women all say, I don't want to see you, but I know what they're thinking. <laughs> yeah. I know what they're thinking. <laughs> I see yeah. right through them. They want a man yeah. to take interest. I just finally actually realized how fucking crazy I <laughs> They want you to come. That's yeah, why they undress now. in front of the window. Uh-huh. That's why their their bush the, the, the brush around their window is all low cut so you can see through it. I understand. Uh, this locked door is a test. Yeah. Uh. They don't test their water for drugs. I see it. I know what's happening. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, the, the more I try to explain myself, the crazier I'm going to sound. God damn it, go for it, baby. Let's go. It only took, what, 14 years of this? I've, I've actually been waiting 14 years of yeah. this. this can, can we just say, everybody, can we just give Justin a round of applause for his uh, first yeah. real breakthrough? Hey, his first yeah. breakthrough in therapy happened oh, right here. God. On the air, as, <laughs> right where it should happen. Yeah. We all came here tonight. Uh, oh what God. happened, really? darling? What happened? Does this kind of count as a meltdown? Tell me what happened. I, mean, I kinda... think so. I think so. Yeah. Been a while. Uh, you know, they, the, he just starts going like, you know, do you really think, I, do you need to come back again? Do you really think I'm helping you? Uh, he basically was pushing me to not making another point. He fired me like, in a nice way. That means he know. can't help you. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He fired me. Your money's no Don't, good I here. I still have two others. It's you okay. Got the, it's not you. It's me. <laughs> I got that. Yeah. Like, wow. uh, you know, is it really like, is there anything? He basically was kind of saying like the he things that you. are wrong with you, I can't help. Is, <laughs> that he did sort of say clearly. Interesting. Uh, he broke up. He fired me. He broke up with you. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. But I have two more. <laughs> you found them on Yelp. You're good. Is it, uh, are, they, are they therapists or are they like uh, psychiatrists who give you drugs and shit like that? I feel like you have one of those in your team. I have one of those oh, and go. I had two therapists and now one therapist fired me. Okay. So now I'm down to one therapist and one psychiatrist. Are you going to replace... The therapist that fired you? I don't know. I'm going to talk to my psychiatrist about that because he's my <laughs> <laughs> because he's my favorite. Okay. Or do you the drug he, he gets me. Do you, or maybe you need two more. Maybe the one wasn't enough. Right. Maybe you that's know? maybe yeah. he was the problem. Right. Right. Yeah. Thank you, do you Charlie. You try you hypnosis. Group therapy. Bring I am going to try that. Actually, I'm actually totally serious. I know, and so am I. I I have that on my agenda to try next. Do he you, needs a whole group to be his therapist. Do you run? Advice from one to the or other. I do. Sometimes I, I, I double check. I talk to them about what the other one said. You yeah. cross check your therapist? No, no. I'm just. Mm. I'm an open book, so I'm always like here. <laughs> Are here, you though? Here's yeah. a, here's an example. Yeah. In fact, maybe this is why he fired me. You're an open codex. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes I see them back to back, and sometimes I see them on different days. Yeah. And and the last time um, I saw them back to back, I saw a therapist and then the the uh, uh, psychiatrist. Okay. And the therapist is like, you have a lot of issues that you need to work through. You need to really think about it. You need to you need to ask yourself the tough questions. You need to figure these things out. And when I go to my psychiatrist, and he's like, you know. You may never figure everything out. You may never figure these things out. You should just fucking relax a little bit and try try to enjoy things. Yeah. Right. So a little bit like like uh, different. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So clearly, I'm like I fucking love the psychiatrist. <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> right. Yeah. So on this last day, I went back to the, the 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 therapist and I told him that I was like, you know, sometimes you guys say different things and. I was careful. I was like, it's both. It's all valuable to me, by the way. There you go. But right. yeah, I totally like told him, and, and the, the therapist he got a little defensive. Sure, he did fire me in the same point. He got. He was Weird. like, well, hmm. he was like, well, I think the psychiatrist was maybe dealing with your anxiety uh-huh. and saying, don't worry about things, yeah. whereas I'm dealing with. How fucked up you are. Right? Your, psychop- yeah. <laughs> your psychopathy or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Macro level issues. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then he's like, we don't have to see each other anymore. <laughs> what, if you could get a, what if you could get a therapist for your therapist mm. so they could, you know, like a coach for the team? I'm pretty sure they know that they need that after seeing me. That mm-hmm. They need a therapist. Mm. Absolutely. They need uh, to decompress. Yeah. 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 So his book was done also. He had all the material he needed. 
That's the first thing that I thought. That the last guy who did this, his book right. was also done. Yeah. And now maybe this guy's book is done. Do you yeah. get royalties? Uh, I don't even get No. Damn. No, because it's all anonymous. You know. I would love it if he asked you to write the foreword to it. How <laughs> yeah. would that be? Fuck. It'd be like... It's like getting mm. cucked, but not really. Mm. It's just <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Dr. So-and-so really... Did a number, <laughs> or at least get book. confirmation of which character you are. You know, like a private, you know, confirmation. privately that yeah. would be great, right? So it's like because hey, then just I would you know the book's it. coming out. You're this guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I would totally promote that. I'd be like, guys. <laughs> My biography is out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. your biography. Semi-autobiographical. Yeah. Yeah. I also don't think it's a good idea for you to see your therapist and your other guy. On the same day? On the same day. Back to back. I don't think that's a good choice. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't usually happen that way. It just happened that day. Mm. And uh, then you got quit fired. And then down. I got quit fired. Do you ever go on to those like, man's retreats where you go out in the woods and like scream at the moon and <laughs> blow each other? Or Why would happens? I ever do that? I don't know. It's just like, like no. the, the primal therapy or whatever. I feel no. like y- you m- might be... Because you're, you, you're, su- you're pseudo... Spiritual in a way. I could see you being into like crystals and fucking no, burning no, no, Palo Santo no. wood up your no. ass or whatever. <laughs> I, I can see that about you. Here's, Sage. Here's shit. what I am. There's also just yeah. Jesus. And, I, and maybe this will like put a fine point on it for you. I'm a yeah. reluctant hippie. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. But I am not spiritual no. or in any of that fucking shit right. whatsoever. Yeah. No, no you, give me drugs any day. You know, I was an advice columnist for five years, and my undergrad is in psych. I don't know why you haven't been coming so much. to me. I did not know. Have, have you talked to yourself? <laughs> <laughs> We've been in the RV together for multiple I've hours. I've never right. heard this it, in seven months. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's hard Although to listen. she has been analyzing <laughs> you oh, yeah. for seven yeah. months. So much. I'm also really good in statistics. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oddly enough, this wasn't in her Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to date the person who took therapy lessons. <laughs> All I right. also became an MFT, I swear to God. What's that? Motherfucking family therapist. therapist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Motherfucking trained. Some, sometimes um, it's hard think, to listen to your own advice. I think Peter what's might be called. Your, what's the person your... who doesn't believe in marriage and doesn't want kids. That makes me the best objective source. <laughs> <laughs> That's all everyone has. We uh, should have talked, Justin. Did, we should have talked, yeah. Justin. Yeah. It's never too See, late. you're already getting chastised by someone who's not your girlfriend. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Also, you clearly, I, I have been talking to you for years now. <laughs> you haven't been listening? In very short spurts. Yeah. How much more talking do you need? What's your quick, what's your personality assessment of, of Dave there now that you've uh, been with him seven months mm-hmm. and you've clearly... You know, analyze him. I'm so fascinated. <laughs> yeah. All right, what is it? What is it? What is it? So the I microphone's go. in my area yeah. now. Yeah. Take off the headphones, Dave. Yeah. I mean, well, he usually listens off, to yeah. me, you know? So I feel like that's really all that I need. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> Winner. He shows up when I want to. Uh, yeah. Call, uh, invites, invites you to things. He doesn't have an anchor yeah. for a hand. Yeah, actually. Yeah. Hmm. This so, is very new to me. Yeah, yeah. So coming from a therapist, a relationship is just about giving her what she needs. Yeah. All it's about the time. meeting my needs. Yeah. <laughs> right. doesn't matter about yours. Yeah. It's Shimki about... and I actually relate to each other in this way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the Probably one, so. This is the one bond we have. <laughs> Can, can you refer your uh, psychiatrist to me? <laughs> He's really good. I hated him at first because uh, he would ju- he would ask me a question and then he would like cut me off. He'd be like, "That's not what I fucking asked." Yeah, and and I was like, "Wow, this guy's really." But then I just realized he's just no bullshit. He's replying to you in the way that guy. you into your personality. I yeah, mean. yeah. I feel he's, like he wouldn't do that to everybody because that would put a lot of people in fragile situations off. But yeah, maybe I think you are you are that guy. Well, at first I was. Put, by the time I went back the second time, did it again. I was like, I love you. No, <laughs> no bullshit. Yeah, it's you and me, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, lick your balls. Or <laughs> yeah, seriously, I'm, lo- I'm in love with my my therapist. Don't like three of us have anxiety disorders just in this room. At least I wouldn't call it disorder. I would just call oh, it a, 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 a level of personality. Yeah. 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 Jesus, uh, I wouldn't yeah. call Mount Diablo a mountain disorder. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. 
I'm like, God, this is what the shows are going to be like. Yeah. You just play off each other. Like, that was a great show, man. Yeah. Have I got a podcast oh, yeah. for you to listen to? You yeah. can use that in your set. It might I not work 30 miles away, but it I works was, right here. I was watching stand-up with somebody the other night, and I was so annoying. I kept pausing it, and I was like, see, like, I can tell <laughs> where they like wrote that oh a God, different I way. Yeah. And I, was, I knew myself. I, I was like, tell. I'm really annoying right yeah. now. <laughs> Uh, I was there happen. in the writing room. Uh, hey, real quick, go to thebrandingbrews.com. Check out the Branding Brews podcast. It's a deep look inside everything that revolves around branding and marketing a brewery. Uh, Branding Brews interviews industry professionals covering in-depth strategies and topics like labels, packaging, websites, social media content, trademark, and more. Uh, whether you're in sales uh, or in marketing or you own a brewery, you're just looking to start a brewery, Branding Brews is a podcast for you. Go to brandingbrews.com and subscribe wherever you like to get your podcasts okay are we about done here with therapy and everything else we are okay um guys charlie dave thanks for being here anytime thank you guys so much i really appreciate it allegory brewing you can go to uh you guys have a website it pushes to facebook right now that's what i thought <laughs> i was just checking so you, but you, you can you can okay sweet. <laughs> you can push in al- allegorybrewing.com uh and go check it out uh find them on facebook you can see where to get the beer it's wonderful beer um how much longer is that Mexican lager going to be around? No, no right? Damn. That's good yeah. stuff. Yeah. The Oof. IPA, mm. awesome as well. Uh, everything we tried, very nice tonight. So go check it out, uh, allegorybrewing.com. And is there an airport near? I've, I've somehow I uh, picture you guys rich like. people. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I picture yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. in the well, middle of nowhere. Yeah, if you got a jet, you can totally fly it like within 10 minutes of the brewery. Okay, well, gotcha. We yeah. don't. Nice. Well, yeah. I thought you guys had a brewing network jet. Well, we borrow one sometimes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. more of a symbolic jet. It's a therapeutic jet. <laughs> jet in our mind. Therapy it, jet. It's cocaine. Whoa, that, it's cocaine. That's, that's, that's what it is. Okay. Tax write off. That's a fucking yeah, tax yeah. write off if I ever yeah. heard one. Cocaine? Therapy. I mean, oh, yes. are, uh, Therapy cocaine should are, also yeah. be. Yeah. We are a gorgeous one hour drive from Portland. Hey, you know what? Oh, Freud okay, wrote a whole yeah, goddamn book on it. <clears throat> yeah. About uh, therapy cocaine? The cocaine papers, yeah. It's actually a cool book. About like know, using cocaine for for therapy, for therapy. Yeah. Jesus, that's Christ. how it was that's like. Why would you tell them that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a mood, <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, huh? Yeah, oh, a great oh way for God. people to do it. Also, is that how you start, uh, from out of town is to if, oh, you're, look, if you're coming this, here we if go. If you're coming to visit Portland um, or Oregon in general from afar, you can always spend a night in Portland. Night in McMinnville, see some wineries, see some breweries, and then uh, we're like halfway between Portland and the coast, oh. and so you could kind of make a, a loop out of it if you would. That's great. Yeah. yeah cool. So, oh, the Oregon coast too is Oregon coast great, magnificent. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. that's a, that's good advice. Thank you. <laughs> so well Staff retreat. Uh, Eighty five dollars. Uh, <laughs> yeah, staff retreat. Exactly. Yeah. That's a, that's I need a to great see idea. Dave. We haven't right. done a nice staff retreat ever. I, I keep telling done. Justin we need a staff retreat. Yeah. Me, we all really you, need to bond. Literally connect. everybody else except Warren in this room. You I guys still have that bond, right? right? Separate private room. Do you think that we like each other enough again the now point, to Justin, handle Justin, is for us, us to get together to try and like each other. I We've think, always liked each other. But I think yeah. the five of us actually like each other. Yeah. I think Justin, JP, and I should go on a staff retreat from you guys. <laughs> you know what? Kim and I will go somewhere else. It'll be great. Hey, hey, can I come with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. And we'll have a better time. Big and they'll salute. be fantastic. Yeah. All right. You guys come up to Oregon. We'll all like go to Bend or something, and then these guys can go to like the go coast shopping. Or something. I yeah. like this because that's all we do. Bev's retreat just she needs just a week off with her family. We'll take Sam. Abby will go with wherever. <laughs> oh yeah, and yeah. so it's the four of us. Then. Oh yeah, Bev gets a retreat. Shimki doesn't count for some reason, and then we're just we're here for some reason. <clears throat> that sounds great. I, I couldn't think of. I'm like, a starting thing to, to say. warm up to this idea, Shimki. Yeah. Actually, because... <laughs> very good idea, yeah. Shimki. Thank you. Yeah. You're not invited. Wait, my idea. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't With even understand idea. the ideas. Your idea of yeah. a full BN staff retreat. I thought. Wait, would it be completely full though? Like we no. could we could omit a a person or two. Yeah, yeah. I've, you don't I've, get to take I've my idea and us? omit me from this. I get where you're going with this, and you don't get yeah. to do it's that. It's not your idea. You and just you just recycle road show. Other people's idea up and down the West Coast. Well, we've done that before, and I that wasn't sort of that turns into a shit show because if it's like that, the then bus. I want to rage. Like, and then not everybody does. And no, I feel like 
people have to. We'll bring your therapist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm fine with it. It's, you know. What if we want to go? What if it's a fucking bag of Coke one night? What if there's a... I don't know. What what. Th- therapy Coke. Yeah. yeah. Coca-Cola. Oh, I'm right. Yes, yes. Of course. You get a, a, a bag a, of put, Coca-Cola. Well, they give you a bag at the 7-Eleven. So basically know. what you're saying is we can't do this because you can't control yourself. No, I'm saying... That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> I'm saying the road trip version we've done oh. already. Okay. And it's okay. It's. I mean, it's fine. But we should try the... Stay in place version. Okay. Well, That's we haven't done saying. like like live like do a like a gathering like a show. Oh, who the fuck wants to do I that? I think this needs to I, be a documentary. Are we That's not a no. retreat. Well, we no, are but no. Now we've evolved. Another. We've evolved from the retreat to work. Now we have. This is, yeah. <laughs> this is why. This is why we don't go on a retreat. I see. Turn his microphone off. Yeah. Okay. The Labruski cruise was kind of a treat. Retreat, right? It was supposed to be work that turned into a retreat. It did, except right? for me. Working, so we got paid. You guys also uh, keep referring okay. to things that I wasn't at. <laughs> yeah, that it was great. These that, are that, called. Nor invited time. to. Kim, <laughs> Kim, what have you been invited to? Kim, Firestone Invitational. These are called. Yeah. These are called good memories. Oh, that's the why. One year, the year that you were invited, I didn't go. Uh, uh, I still have that. I stumbled across a photo of Kim hung the fuck over in the RV mm, coming mammoth. back. Yeah, that was mammoth. mammoth. You were invited to Mammoth. And I you invited didn't hang, myself you to didn't, Mammoth, first And you of didn't all. hang out with us because you were you were banging some douchebag again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dave. No offense. And their names are in order. <laughs> Dave, uh, Brad, Steve, John, Jacob. You guys are the worst. <laughs> Yeah. So we didn't even get to hang out with you, except when you were puking all yeah, the way miserable home. Miserable in the RV. <laughs> yeah. Going down the windiest yeah. road ever in, in the history yeah. of roads. In the bounciest RV <laughs> throwing ever. up. It really her, her, was hell. I, like, dying sounded better. Your complexion time. looked like the upholstery on the RV. <laughs> Although in Which her, was blue, by the way. Right. In, in her defense, meanwhile, uh, JP and I are white-knuckled in the front <laughs> because we don't know if the brakes are going to oh work God. or yeah. not going down this road. Right. That was a good time. Yeah. That was actually, honestly, a really good time. <laughs> okay, I had a good see. time with that. There we go. And the first Firestone Walker, you cheated at Fort Edward Four Loco hands, so we can't even trust you to play games. It's right. true. Yeah. Oh. You're kind of terrible. Maybe yeah. Dave wants to join the crew. Yeah. You guys should swap roles. Yeah, Dave, you want to go to yeah. Firestone yeah. this year? I yeah. am so in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. You don't even stay in the RV. You go stay out Yes, of I did. The last time... What, what was it? Not last year, but the year before. You weren't going to let me in the RV. <laughs> oh, really? I was like, there's plenty of space. So Taylor and I shared a spot. Because I'm like, you can fit Whoa, all of Taylor. it. Taylor. Hey. All right. Justin's like, you need to get I a tent. You. I I'm did. like, but aren't there enough people? Like, there's enough spots in the RV. He's like, you really should probably get a tent. So I, you broke your one. I'm like, I don't have yeah, a car. Because of your night hugging. I think that's why. I was probably trying to protect you because I assume that everybody night hugs like I do. Yeah. Uh, which, which is when yeah. you pass out <laughs> and then you wake up and you're doing inappropriate things. I didn't want that to happen to you. Oh, yeah. sure. It was all in the kindness of your heart. Yeah, yes. your honesty. Yeah. So it happened yeah, to me. Sure. So I took a bullet. I used, I'll say bullet euphemistically. Actually, yeah. thank you too. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, everyone had a spot. That's why we had Taylor and I had to share. There were spots available, right. but we all just migrate to each other's spot. That's what how. Right, but yeah. there was room. Right. And originally, Justin's like, "So you're going to have to procure a tent." I'm like, well, I don't have a car. I don't have any camping yeah. equipment. He's like, "Well, that's kind of how it's going to work." But yeah. you can come. I just consider you an independent woman. You can figure the shit out. I don't yeah. Know, you know? yeah. Where, where's the feminist when yeah. you need it right now? <laughs> he wants you to thrive, Kim. I would almost <laughs> rather stay in a tent. See, I mean, she's also not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bevo has been night hugged before. She knows. And it has, had, it has happened, and I don't want to talk about it. Day <laughs> hug. She's been afternoon hug. She's been dog I've hug. I've been low hug. <laughs> yeah, high hug. We all took turns putting on different music. We did. We really we did. connected that. That was night. Like, it was fun. It was yeah. like what we should be doing on retreat. Right. But I will say, Mammoth was okay. better. Was it because I, liked because I wasn't because there. Because yeah. stayed elsewhere. Right. No, because I I don't know. Just the vibe was better. I had a good time. I think mm. you just hung out with Push the whole time. Yeah, had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, uh, send me your ideas. Again? <laughs> Feedback you know at thebringnetwork.com. Send them to me. 
and I will make a choice. No, I think Kim That's was like, we should go like do Panic Room. I think we should not go to Panic Room. No, I said we should all like go to Santa Cruz yeah, and what do, I have do a, a beer tour down there <laughs> together. Yeah. Yeah. No, let's do a Panic Room. I'll put on my fedora and my duster. <laughs> no, and I'll I wear my, my anime room. shirt. And it we'll would do increase a our trust in each other. Trust falls. I worry about Justin in a Panic Room. Yeah, Smart man, Charlie. Smart man. Paintball. I'd rather do paintball than I'm, Manny Petty. I'm either going to figure that shit out real quick, <laughs> yeah, or, or it's going to go south. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's going to go south. Uh, all right, we got to go. Hey, can I do a quick shout out? Yes. Our friend Peter Simons, you guys remember him? He's a good Australian dude. He's, he wrote a book on brewing Australian uh, beers called uh, Bronze Brews. Well, he's writing another book called Six O'Clock Brews, and he wants to hear from everybody. He's having a hard time getting access to some ancient. And I mean really ancient, ancient, um, ancient stuff from um, Australian breweries. He says, uh, if any, anybody has any uh, information that could potentially lead me to new discoveries, like when I joined the dots between Grove Johnson, whatever, whatever. Uh, he needs some help. He's re- researching for his next book. I was about to read like a bunch of Australian brewery names that I've never heard of. And, you know, Grove whatever. Johnson. <laughs> yeah, Grove <Sounds> Johnson. Like- <laughs> um, if anybody has any info recreating old Australian beers, uh, he needs uh, information from historic 1800s to 1980s beers from Victoria, Queensland, South Australia, and country areas generally. You can email him at prstemp at yahoo.com.au, or he's obviously on Facebook too. Um, but he's looking for uh, you know a lot of old uh, Australian breweries trying to recreate the old um, the old beers there. Okay. If Grove Johnson doesn't sound like an Oregon brewery name, that I I don't know what does. Uh, the hipster uh, with the duck boots, mm. and, yeah, that'd be a good beer name. What do you think uh, Grove Johnson would have? Like like uh, spruce tips in it or something? <laughs> at or least Grove, yeah. amber colored spruce tip beer. Yeah. At least that. Or Bohemian Grove, where you all just talk about world domination. What? What do you mean, you all? Well, I mean, the people Y'all? who go there. I see. Not you. Not okay. me. I felt like you were talking about me. I, I know. I slipped up, dude. Right? <laughs> what do you want from me? Let's put a fine point on it. All right, Charlie, Dave, thanks for being here. Kim, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to Send see you. Send in my retreat idea. Yeah, it's good to see you <laughs> happy and not me. self-loathing. <laughs> Uh, JP, ready to get us out of here? Sure, dude. All right, we are off next week, a little vacation. Actually, we're off for two weeks, which Whoa. is nice. Yeah, a little, right. little two-week break while we got things all to take right. care of. Um, all right, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you to our show sponsor, More Beer. You can get absolutely everything you need to make great beer at home by going to morebeer.com. Allegory Brewing from McMinnville, Oregon, made their way down to the Bay Area to hand out some delicious beers and a couple handshakes. Learn more about them on their company Facebook page, I guess. Merge your love of Disneyland with your lack of engaging podcast and go to earsuppodcast.com as JP, Terrence, Bevo, and Taryn talk about all things Disney. And you can also get on Twitter for some good beer insight and homebrew info. And follow Nate Smith at Nathan Homebrew, Mike McDowell at TC McD, Warren is stuck over at Another Beardy, JP knows Twitter is dead, so he's on Instagram at Major Jip. Also, Bevo is there too at Beverly M. Moore, but they don't follow each other. Be sure to find the Brewing Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Sky and winning the race, JP does.